Chapter 627 Forget I Asked Dragon Palace Home Number 10 That night, Iris arrived home exhausted just before dinner time. She got an earful from Tang Yi when she returned to work after leaving Jean Liwei's office with red, puffy eyes. Fortunately, the swelling went down after she used a cold eye mask, a prototype for a future Orchidia beauty product. Jean Liwei called to tell her that he would be running late tonight but promised that he would come home before bedtime. They still wanted to talk more about what happened earlier in his office before sleeping. Later, Iris headed to the kitchen for dinner. Surprisingly, Lu Ziheo was also there. He had been absent for quite some time ever since the bomb incident. The siblings hadn't seen or spoken with each other for many days. Lu Ziheo looked as exhausted as Iris, maybe even more so than her. He must have been very busy with whatever he had been doing. She knew that she was one of the reasons why he was so busy because he and Jean Liwei were jointly working on their own investigations to find out the real mastermind behind the bomb attack. Her own investigations on the side had also gained a few small clues but nothing too significant yet. They had been cooperating by sharing their investigations results. The Shadow Winds hacker team was a great help in decreasing her burden in the investigations. She discovered that they collectively named themselves as the Hacker Sean and had helped her contain the malicious online hate campaign against her right after the bomb incident. Sometimes, she would impart some hacking tips and tricks to them that would leave them all ecstatic. They were improving at an impressive rate, greatly pleasing Lu Ziheo. However, they were still several leagues below a world-class master hacker like Iris, but that was only because she was a monstrous genius. They needed to dig deeper in order to find out the real mastermind behind the bomb incident. With each passing day that they failed to find anything concrete, Iris became more certain that either the mastermind or the protector was a formidable hacker like her. This only made the situation more dangerous yet also more exciting for her. But for now, she had to put this whole matter aside because of how exhausted she felt after everything that happened at Jean Liwei's office today. The brother and sister, Lu Ziheo and Iris, ate dinner with the others except for Jean Liwei who was still at work. I heard that you visited third brother in his office during lunch, Lu Ziheo talked in a casual tone while they ate. But then I heard something interesting. Iris already had a feeling what he was about to say but still asked, what is it? I heard that you left his office with red and swollen eyes. He placed his chopsticks down and looked at her. His aura became dangerous, making Dom and Jiang Yingyu shut up from their own lively conversation and then cower in their seats. Fortunately, little Jun was too young to sense danger so the toddler continued eating his food, unaware of the change in the atmosphere. So tell me, little sister, Lu Ziheo said in a deceptively light voice. Did you fight with third brother? Then his voice turned cold. Did that bastard make you cry? Although affected by her brother's deadly aura, Iris still straightened her back and replied to him in a calm, firm voice. Li Wei is not a bastard, big brother. He's my future husband, and, and the father of my future baby, or babies. His eyes narrowed, his lips thinned, and the air grew colder. Dom and Jiang Yingyu shivered and avoided looking at the siblings. Little Jun continued eating happily and entertained himself by watching the antics of his cat cousin, the goofy popcorn. And no, Li Wei and I didn't fight, Iris continued. He didn't make me cry. Technically, it wasn't him. He. Is that so? Lu Ziheo asked, still suspicious. He picked up his chopsticks again to resume eating. Then why did you cry after leaving his office? Iris was about to complain why he knew so much about what happened earlier when he wasn't even there, but then remembered that about half of her personal security team consisted of his subordinates. Those people must have ratted her out to him as soon as they arrived home. He. What is this? Not going to tell the reason to your big brother? Fine. Li Wei and I made love in his office and it got wild and intense. I lost control of myself and I just started screaming and sobbing. That's what happened. Are you satisfied now? 
Lu Ziheo froze, his expression indescribable. Dong gasped dramatically and covered the ears of the clueless and innocent little Jun while Jiang Yingyu turned red. Iris didn't lie to her brother. Well, not technically. She only applied some of the interview dodging skills Tang Yi constantly instilled in her and chose to tell only part of the truth while hiding some. She didn't want to hide things from her brother but had to in order to protect her man. If Lu Ziheo knew that she had a pregnancy scare earlier today, he would probably beat the shit out of Jin Liwei as soon as he returned home later tonight. Lu Ziheo cleared his throat to clear the awkwardness. Forget I asked. By the way, have you tasted this scallion soup? It's good. Here, eat some. Iris was relieved that they stopped talking about the topic. She wanted to talk to Jin Liwei about it first before sharing it with others, if the need to share with their family and friends became a must. But first, she and Jin Liwei needed to confirm whether she was really pregnant or not. Finally, dinner ended and they all headed to their own rooms. The brother and sister walked together in the meantime. I'm glad that nothing serious happened with you and your man, Lu Ziheo said. This body, and also I know after living as Lu Ziheo for some time now that Jin Liwei is a good and dependable man. He'll take care of you. I also have to admit that I can see very clearly that he loves and cares for you. Heck, the man's ready to give you everything, even die for you. You just need to ask and he'll do it. A smile blossomed on Iris' lips, brightening up her beautiful face, giving her a soft and loving expression. Yes. I know. But. Lu Ziheo stopped walking. She stopped walking, as well. He's still a man who'll eventually make mistakes. There might come a time when he'll hurt you either unintentionally or on purpose. She didn't reply, instead waiting for him to say more. Regardless of whether it's unintentional or not, hurting my sister is still something I deem unforgivable. So if he ever hurts you and makes you cry, remember to tell me. Even if you don't tell me, I'll still know. If that happens, I'll. Big brother, I love Jean Liwei, she interrupted. If you ever harm him, you'll hurt me, too. Comma. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 628 Reminiscing Memories of the Pa When I woke up as, this, Iris swept her hands over herself. As the new me, I was very excited to live this new chance in life. I had many goals and ambitions and also plans to accomplish them. During that time, I envisioned myself reaching everything on my own. But when Li Wei barged into my life and I fell in love with him, I realized that although I still have the same goals and ambitions, they slightly changed to include him as well. Now, whenever I envision my future, he's always there beside me as a constant part of my life. Big brother, ever since I fell in love with Li Wei, I now can't imagine living the rest of my life without him. I love him so much that I almost can't believe how I'm capable of loving someone so much that isn't you, my brother, my family. If something bad ever happens to him, I, I'll probably lose control and hunt down the people who harmed him. Lu Ziheo was silent for a few seconds before asking, even me. If I harm him, you'll hunt even me, your own brother. She couldn't answer right away, looking at him instead with a complicated expression. I love Li Wei, big brother. I love you, too. I don't want to choose between the two of you. Both of you are the most important men in my life right now. I refuse to choose between the two of you. But, I won't be able to sit still if you hurt Li Wei, so please don't. I don't want our relationship to be ruined by something like that. He took a deep breath after hearing her honest words. His hands clenched and unclenched, the veins popping out to the surface of his skin. Iris braced herself and faced the stormy aura her brother was currently emitting. It made her heart shake, yet she stood her ground to show him that she was serious. Although she understood that her brother was fiercely protective of her, she couldn't tolerate his subtle threats against Jean Li Wei any longer. 
he needed to understand that Jean Liwei was here to stay in her life as her future husband whether he liked it or not. She sensed that her brother was experiencing an internal struggle between his past identity as Nikolai Vetrov and his new life as Lu Ziheo who was sworn brothers with her man, Jean Liwei. However, it was his own battle to fight with himself. She couldn't solve it for him, especially after going through the same thing herself. It was difficult and dangerous, but he still needed to overcome it on his own. I understand, he finally said after managing to calm himself. As long as he doesn't hurt you and make you suffer, I won't interfere. Both of us didn't have it easy in our past lives. We were always trudging the boundary between life and death, not knowing when we'd make a deadly mistake or when our enemies would successfully kill us. They eventually succeeded, he hissed through gritted teeth. His eyes flashed with murderous intent before controlling it. I know that you hated that life, how caged you felt, and suffered because of it, he continued. I couldn't do anything for you back then because it was too dangerous to let you go free in the outside world. But everything is different now. The Vetrovs are no more. The people we were before are no more. We had fallen and were reduced to ashes. Desolation filled his eyes, making Iris tremble and her eyes moist as she watched him. A small desire of revenge also stirred within her at the thought of the fallen Vetrovs, but it got quickly buried into the deepest recesses of herself before she could even notice. Her new life as Long Shilan, a.k.a. Iris Long, and the endless possibilities of achieving all of her dreams that she wasn't able to do in her past life had overpowered almost everything for her. Not to mention that she was able to find the love of her life in this new life, making her view her past life as Evelina Vitrova as something almost illusory now. If it weren't for the rebirth of her brother as Lu Ziheo and how they remained close to each other in this new life of theirs plus some of the deep traumas still remaining with her, perhaps the memories of her past life as Evelina Vitrova would gradually fade away until almost everything was forgotten. It was impossible to forget everything, but perhaps if her current situation was different, there would come a day that she would wake up and treat the memories of her past life as a figment of imagination. In a sense, she was grateful that she met her reborn brother before Evelina's memories started fading away. He was a link to their past lives. Although she hated that life, she didn't want to forget it because it was a big part of who she was even now as Iris Long. Lu Ziheo's eyes looked like he was somewhere far away and not standing right in front of her. She remained silent and allowed her brother to reminisce the memories of their past lives, both the glorious and tragic alike, as the crown prince and sheltered princess of the former reigning criminal family of the international underworld. Finally, his eyes became clear once again. They looked at her with their usual sharpness but also with gentleness. I don't want you to suffer anymore. You are now Long Shilan who I'm sure will be known in the future as the genius superstar. You'll take the world by storm and live your life freely just like how you always wanted. I'm looking forward to watching you reach all of your dreams. Big brother. I wish you a happy life, little sister. And if you think that you'll be happy with Jean Liwei by your side. I do, Iris replied before he could finish his sentence. Jean Liwei gives me happiness. I know that I'll be happy with him by my side. Comma. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 629 Moonlit Nai Lu Ziheo sighed, a little grumpily, a little helplessly, and a little dotingly. I know. I can see it clear as day. I'm glad that you finally feel alive and free now, little sister. That you're living the life that you always wanted together with the man you love. I'm glad that he's beside you, taking care of you, supporting you, protecting you, and loving you. Then his lips curled in bad temper. But that doesn't mean that I don't have the urge to punch him in the face every time he acts like he wants to jump you like a horny dog in a rut. I know as Lu Ziheo that he's a good and loyal man but damn it. I really want to beat the shit out of him sometimes, especially when I know that he's often undressing you in his mind when he sees you. Iris giggled. Big brother. 
What? She leaned forward and whispered, Actually, it's not only Li Wei who's horny. I also want to jump him and make love with him almost all the time. I also undress him in my mind and... Stop it. Don't say anything anymore. Lu Ziheo roared. I can't hear anything. I don't hear anything. My little sister is forever a virgin in my mind. Iris threw her head back and laughed. She doubled over and laughed even harder when he glared at her. Trying hard to control herself, she forced a serious expression on her face. You're overreacting, big brother. I might have been naive when it comes to sex before I met Li Wei and became sexually active with him but I wasn't completely clueless about it, even in my past life. He opened his mouth, about to interrupt her but she didn't let him, continuing to speak instead. I know for a fact that you're not a virgin either, big brother. That you also sleep with women, both in your past life and now as Lu Ziheo. I also know that you don't form attachments to the women you sleep with and only treat them as bedmates, nothing more. You have your own arrangements, I also have mine, with my fiancé who I love very much. My point is that both of us are adults now. We both know what sex is, what it's like, and even experience it on a regular basis. Well, I don't know how often you get it, but as for me and Li Wei, we certainly do it regularly. Okay, that's enough. I get it, he tried interrupting. So I don't understand why you get so angry every time I talk about my active sex life with Jean Li Wei who is, by the way, my fiancé and my future husband. He'll be your brother-in-law, you know, and also, also, the father of your future human nieces or nephews. Her hand involuntarily moved to touch her flat stomach but she caught herself in time and stopped it. Her big brother was an observant person and had extremely sharp eyes. He would surely catch her action of touching her stomach after talking about Jean Li Wei fathering her future human children and then grow suspicious. Although her big brother lived the way he did, cold, detached and rarely formed close personal or intimate ties with others except for her, she knew that he was a traditional person. It was only now that he was living as Lu Ziheo that he formed close relationships with others besides her, choosing to maintain the previous ties of the original Lu Ziheo with Grandpa Lu, Jean Li Wei, and their other sworn brothers, and a few other people. She was glad to see that he wasn't limiting himself to these relationships but were also expanding his connections to the people she had grown close to as Iris Long. As a traditional person and also as a fiercely protective older brother, she knew that he would go crazy if she became pregnant out of wedlock. She decided that it was safer to act cautious around him when she still wasn't sure if Jean Li Wei got her pregnant today or not. While Iris was busy with her own thoughts, Lu Ziheo felt livid yet also helpless at her. You, you, you. He was a man in control of his own emotions, yet in front of his precious little sister, he had been rendered speechless. His sister always had been straightforward to a fault, but that was part of her charm which he and their father in their past life adored. Still, sex life as a topic of conversation between siblings was still too much information. This conversation is over, he announced in a firm voice. The exhaustion that he was already feeling earlier became worse all of a sudden. It was exhausting trying to deal with his sister's honesty and straightforwardness. Despite this, he would never fault her for it. All he could do was sigh. It's getting late. I'm tired and need to sleep. You should, too. I hear that you have a full schedule tomorrow. She nodded and lifted herself on her tippy toes to kiss him on the cheek. Good night, big brother. Sleep well. Good night, little sister. He wanted to walk her to her suite but she declined, saying that she wasn't going to her room yet. She watched him walk away and disappear as he headed to his own bedroom. When he was finally out of sight, she pressed a hand to her flat stomach, gently rubbing it. Anxiety filled her, especially after talking to her brother. Their conversation prompted her to remember something important that she needed to talk about with Jean Li Wei. Hurry home, darling, she whispered into the night. Comma. 10, 14 p.m. 
Jean Liwei handed his coat and tie to the butler while heading to where his baby girl was waiting for him. He wanted to eat dinner with her but couldn't because of how busy it was at the company right now. Normally around this time of the year, he would choose to stay in the office and rarely went home. And if he needed to go home, it would be awfully late, hours after midnight, sometimes just before sunrise. But that was when he was still a glorified bachelor. Now he had a wife waiting for him at home, and possibly, a little bundle of joy inside her womb. His steps quickened as excitement filled him upon remembering the accident that happened to them when they made love in his office earlier. His long legs traversed and reached the music room in a short time. The door was open when he arrived. Tempestuous piano music gushed out of the room and drenched him as soon as he entered. The light was turned off, yet he immediately saw his baby girl playing the piano under the dim light of the moon by the window. Jean Liwei was mesmerized. He stopped in his tracks, leaned by the doorway, and just watched his woman produce such otherworldly music with every press of her graceful fingers on the piano keys. The music was chaotic, like a thunderstorm, yet still sounded harmonious and beautiful, a wonder of nature. Sometimes it was fast and urgent, foreboding and erratic. At other times it was peaceful and delicate, sweet and uplifting. It gave him goosebumps. He had never heard this music before and instinctively knew that it was his baby girl's own composition. He also knew her well enough to understand that this new composition must be her trying to make sense of her turbulent emotions caused by what happened to them in his office earlier today. She wasn't able to fully express her feelings in words, so she could only do it through the method of communication that she was a master of, music. Emotions welled inside him, as he immersed himself in listening to her music. There were no words, yet now he grasped the true depth of her anxiety and fear and also discovered her excitement and happiness that he couldn't fully understand when they talked earlier. He thought that he understood her then. How wrong he was. Her music allowed him to understand her true emotions in a way her own words couldn't. Unable to contain himself any longer, he walked towards her, using his long legs to reach her faster. Then he wrapped his arms around her waist from behind her and nuzzled the side of her neck. Iris closed her eyes and smiled, leaning her cheek to his nuzzles. She continued playing the piano while in the arms of her lover in the moonlit night, you're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 630 Title is a Spoiler the lovers remained in that beautiful position while the otherworldly music played with the moonlight illuminating them under its dim radiance. Jean Liwei sat beside his baby girl, admiring her beauty in her graceful fingers skipping, pounding, dancing, and caressing the piano keys. It was almost unbelievable the kind of music she could produce. The music she was currently playing made his heart tremble, ache, and elated, and also stirred his very soul. It felt very personal, as if he could directly feel her emotions like they were his own. It was like magic. She was magical. And she was his. When the last notes of her music drifted into the night, there was only silence. Only the soft sounds of their breathing and the beating of their hearts could be heard in the moonlit room. Iris leaned her head on Jean Liwei's shoulder and inhaled his familiar masculine scent. Doing so made her feel warm, loved, safe, secure, and also thrilled and excited all at the same time. No other person in the world could give her this kind of range of feelings. He made her feel all kinds of emotions that sometimes it was scary. He pulled her closer and nibbled on her earlobe, making her shiver, and then whispered, I'm home, my love. Welcome home, darling. Thank you for waiting for me. She smiled. I wanted to talk to you before we sleep. There's something I need to tell you. He studied her and tried to guess what she wanted to tell him based on her expression but failed. All right. We'll talk. I also need to ask you something. Instantly curious, she asked, what is it? Later. Accompany me for dinner? Of course. Iris and Jean Liwei left the music room and headed to the kitchen together. 
They chatted about a wide range of topics but didn't talk about what happened in his office. The atmosphere was warm and light. Their smiles and laughter flowed like a relaxing breeze while Jean Liwei ate a late dinner. The staff members who were serving them could sense an extra tenderness in how their master and mistress interacted with each other tonight. Most of the time, invisible yet noticeable sparks flew between the couple whenever they were together in the same room. The intense sexual chemistry was always present and unmistakable, no matter how innocent they looked and touched each other in front of people. The staff couldn't quite put a finger on what exactly it was, but they could all sense that something significant had changed between their master and mistress. And whatever it was, it made them closer and more lovey-dovey with each other. After Jean Liwei's late dinner, the couple finally retired to their bedroom suite. Iris took care of him, assisting him out of his business suit, waiting for him to finish showering, and helping him into his pajamas, just like how he took care of her when she broke down earlier in his office. Seeing his gorgeous, muscled, naked body, Iris licked her lips and ogled him without any shame. Her desire ignited in an instant. Jean Liwei saw the fire in his baby girl's eyes. His own desire started blazing as well, the evidence of his arousal creating a tent underneath his pajama pants. However, the two seemed to have reached a tacit agreement to give it a rest tonight. And to be honest, Iris was feeling sore after being loved by Jean Liwei who was very wild and intense while making his office fantasy come to reality earlier that day. Don't get her wrong, though. She enjoyed it immensely, thank you very much, but she needed to rest tonight, especially her lower body. Oh, and her mind too, of course. Her mind was still reeling a bit after the pregnancy scare. Fortunately, she was young and worked hard to maintain a healthy and fit body. She was confident that her body would recover quickly, so that she could once again seduce her darling and engage in another wild and intense lovemaking. If it wasn't for her high pain tolerance, she probably would have been walking with a limp for the rest of the day. It felt like she made love with a big and wild bear, but a sexy and hot one at that. Iris mentally shook herself and forced all of the lewd thoughts about her darling out of her mind. She craved for him but her body couldn't take any more of him tonight. How unfortunate. All she could do was sigh and satisfy herself with helping him get ready for bed. It was already midnight and they finally climbed on their huge bed and cuddled under the thick duvet. I just had you this noon, yet I want you again, Jean Liwei whispered to her ear. Same here she whispered back. They looked at each other. He smirked while she giggled. The two grinned at each other like idiots for a few moments before Jean Liwei's expression became serious. I called second brother on the phone after you left my office, he told her. He said that we should wait before letting you have a pregnancy test because testing too early might give us the wrong results. She didn't reply, thinking about what he said. He continued, in the meantime, I hope that you won't push yourself too hard. I won't stop you from working because I know how much you love your work, but please, love, take care of yourself when I'm not physically by your side. Okay. Okay. They both fell silent. You said that you want to tell me something, he asked. She nodded, then paused. You said that you need to ask me something. N. But you first. No, you first. They looked at each other, unsure of how to proceed. This went on for almost a minute. Then Iris decided to go first but so did he. They ended up speaking at the same time. Leeway, let's get married. Love, how about we get married earlier than planned? Comma. You're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 631 Poor Husband Oh. You. They stared at each in surprise, not expecting that they had the same idea. Love, you really want to, I mean, are you sure? Really? Iris rose and sat on the bed. He followed suit. They sat facing each other, their initial surprise replaced by wonder. Jean Liwei wanted to marry her as soon as possible. 
He had been wanting to do so even before he realized that he had fallen in love with her, way back when he used all kinds of schemes to trick her into becoming his girlfriend. But after facing various challenges together and realizing that he couldn't live the rest of his life without her, he became determined to do everything in order to keep her by his side forever. That included respecting and accepting her wish to wait until she was ready before they could marry, despite wanting to make her officially and lawfully his wedded wife right after his successful marriage proposal. He welcomed the accident that happened to them in his office earlier today. If the accident successfully bore fruit and she really got pregnant, then he finally had a strong reason to persuade her to marry him sooner than they originally planned. He had been waiting for something like this to push their wedding forward. Although he harbored thoughts of poking needle holes in his condoms or entering her raw before, he never put them into action because he would never betray her trust by doing those shady deeds behind her back. So when the condom broke during their intense lovemaking in his office, he was also shocked and didn't expect it to happen. He sure didn't break it on purpose. Nevertheless, he also didn't regret that he broke it. If his baby girl forgot to give Dominic Chua a raise after this, Jean Leeway decided that he would give it himself. Thanks to the fragile condom that Dom gave his baby girl, Jean Leeway now had an extra powerful ammo to make her marry him sooner. If she really got pregnant, there was no way he would allow their child to be born illegitimate and subject her and their baby to the ridicule of those idiotic people with backward mentality. He already made a mental plan on how to persuade her to agree with him, not expecting that she would also suggest the same thing. This was why he was overjoyed when he heard the words, let's get married, from her own lips. As for Iris, her reason for suggesting to marry earlier than planned wasn't as complicated as this. She just didn't want her big brother beating the shit out of Jean Leeway and possibly even murdering him if Lu Ziheo discovered that she got pregnant out of wedlock, if she really got pregnant. Her fiercely protective big brother was the traditional type when it came to her and would never forgive Jean Leeway if he knocked her up before marrying her. In fact, it was already commendable that her brother was able to control himself and accept the fact that Jean Leeway took her virginity and was living with her in addition to sleeping with her on a regular basis before marriage. Iris was thankful that her brother was now Lu Ziheo, a sworn brother of Jean Leeway, and not the infamous and terrifying crown prince of the Vetrovs. If her brother was still Nikolai Vetrov, she shivered just thinking about it. Thus, in order to prevent her darling from getting murdered by her big brother, she thought that getting married earlier than planned would be the safer choice. Let's marry before winter, Jean Leeway suggested. So soon. What if I'm not pregnant after all? He frowned. You won't marry me sooner if you're not pregnant. That's not what I mean. It's just that both of us are extremely busy right now. I already told you many times before that you're more important to me than my work. If I need to, I'll take leave from work for you. Don't forget that I'm the boss of Gene Corporation. I can create my own damn schedule if I want to. Busy or not, I'll choose you over the company at any time. Besides, if anyone dares to kick me out of Gene Corporation, I'll just become a house husband. After all, my wife is a famous celebrity not to mention that she has her own businesses which are doing extremely well. You'll take care of me and support me if your poor husband suddenly becomes unemployed, won't you, my love? Iris fell into a fit of giggles. Of course, darling. I think I can manage to earn enough for both of us. And for our children, too, he added. Her giggles turned nervous but she still nodded. Yes. For our children, too, she agreed in a soft voice. He pulled her in his arms. Don't worry, love. Except for Grandpa Lou, I won't let anyone snatch Gene Corporation away from me that easily. It's the company which my own grandfather worked so hard with Grandpa Lou to build from the ground up and my father maintained until it was handed down to me. I want to be the one to take care of you and support you. But at least, I now have the peace of mind that you'll be willing to become a working wife if I ever end up being a humble househusband. We'll take care and support each other, Li Wei. N. He inhaled the lovely scent of her hair and hugged her tighter. 
I know that marrying me now will set you back a bit after all your hard work since the year started because there are still idiots who think that you're using me to advance your career. Her expression turned serious as she listened to him. He continued, I know that you want to be recognized for your own accomplishments and I respect that. I love and admire that about you. You're such a strong and independent woman, yet not everyone sees that. Stupid, blind fools. You're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 632 Stable and Successful Jean Liwei snorted in derision at all his baby girl's detractors. He knew very well what an amazing, talented, and intelligent woman she was. A genius. Yet those blind fools still continued yapping away and spreading lies about his baby girl, not to mention belittling her achievements as if they had the ability to easily do the same things. Iris sighed and stroked his cheek, trying to calm his anger. She didn't pay much attention to the naysayers, most of the time treating them like fart, unpleasant but would pass by and go away after some time. The same couldn't be said for Jean Liwei, however. According to Ketchup, there were several occasions when he bullied some people, giving them a taste of his domineering power and influence, because they said something bad about her. Almost all of them were members of high society. He hadn't said anything to her about those instances. If it wasn't for the talkative Ketchup, Iris wouldn't have known about it. Despite this, she didn't tell him that she knew about his secret actions of protecting her reputation because they already had a tacit understanding not to interfere with each other's works without permission. She wasn't mad. On the contrary, she felt thankful, loved and cared for by him. It gave her a feeling of security knowing that she could depend on him whenever she needed. Her touch calmed him down. He continued, Fortunately, your achievements this year are all phenomenal, especially when it comes to Orchidia beauty. I'm so proud of you, love. Thanks. She smiled and patted his cheek. Despite his improved expression, Jean Liwei was still fuming deep inside because there were already some people trying to spin Orchidia beauty's success as something directly caused by him. Ridiculous. Those narrow-minded fools just couldn't understand that she could be so successful in her own right. Even more infuriating was that those idiots were spreading their prejudiced views, wanting other people to believe that without him, his baby girl couldn't be so successful on her own. Iris pinched his cheek. Hard. Jean Liwei grunted and grabbed her hand away from his poor cheek before rubbing it with his other hand. Then he retaliated by giving her a few loud, smacking kisses on her cheek which made her giggle again. Liwei, don't worry about those people anymore. They're not important. I remember that after you proposed to me, I asked you to wait until both my showbiz career and businesses have stabilized and reached a certain level of success before we could marry. It was a selfish request of mine. Not at all. I understand. She scooted over to him and cozied up in his arms. Yes, she agreed, sighing in contentment. Do you think that my showbiz career is stable now? N. Your fans and the music industry waited for you even when you had to take breaks. Is it successful now? N. You're now one of the best-selling and most respected young musicians in showbiz, plus one of the top endorsers this year. Then he added, my brother still holds the number one spot for top endorser but you'll overtake him soon. Brother Chong Lin is a superstar. He won't be so easy to beat. True, he agreed. He's a superstar and I'm proud of him as an older brother. But I believe that my wife will be a bigger superstar than him because my wife is the best. I'm not your wife yet, she retorted, giggling. You'll be, if you agree to marry me soon. Instead of replying, she made herself more comfortable in his embrace and continued asking, how about my companies? Are they stable? Would you consider them successful at this stage? Let's see. Jean Liwei's expression became serious as he went into business mode. Gold Heights is already successful when you got it, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Just checking now and then is enough. 
You've also been making full use of the fact that your mentor, Sir Enrique Valdez, is staying in one of your buildings which in turn has increased the value of the company's stocks. Now Gold Heights is known as a place that even world superstars like the legendary hitmaker would choose as a residence while staying here in China. Well done, my love. The couple shared a shameless smile while the sound of a certain old man's booming laughter echoed inside their minds. Next is Planet Monkey. Your gaming company recently managed to break even and started to really make a profit. To be honest, it's the one among your businesses that I felt the most nervous about because you spent so much money buying Xlorsen's advanced technology. If he wasn't a cross academy student like you, I would have done everything in my power to dissuade you from that particular investment. Fortunately, Supreme Ascension became a big hit among gamers. However, I still want you to exercise caution because the gaming industry is very fickle especially for new companies. You need to keep your current gamers invested in the game and evoke loyalty from them while also trying to attract new gamers. Iris nodded. Then there's Orchidia Beauty. What more can I say about it? It's a winner. Auric Bauer's products are unbelievably amazing. That's why it's such a big success, she said. Yes, and there's you, my love. Without you, there would have been no Orchidia Beauty. Bauer's products would probably continue being sold by his sister at that street market in Munich. Maybe. How about Liberté, she asked next. Announcing it at such a high-profile event as Orchidia Beauty's grand launch was an excellent idea. Not to mention you and my brother will eventually release your perfume lines under its brand. It's already making waves before you even officially launch it, he said. However, we won't know for sure until then. Clover needs to sort out everything about it first. She'll have a lot of work to do because Sang Blue didn't have a good reputation and many are still prejudiced against it. A delicate but aggressive rebranding is needed for it to be successful. Dot you're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 633 On Fire Listening to Jean Liwei's brief analyses of each of her companies provided Iris a more objective view of them. Indeed, having the country's top businessman of his generation as a fiancé had its advantages. Despite this, she never depended on him to make her businesses successful. That was something that she was determined to do on her own and wanted to prove to everyone. However, it didn't mean that she would reject his offer of help if she needed it. She straightened so that they sat face to face. My companies are still nowhere near Jean Corporation's level but based on the fact that I've only been a businesswoman last year, I think that they've become quite stable and successful enough. N. Then he raised an eyebrow, a teasing smile lifting the corner of his lips. So you plan for your companies to reach Jean Corporation's level? Or maybe you want them to surpass my company? Of course, she said, not denying it. Now it was her turn to tease him. You just mentioned that if you become an unemployed househusband, then I would need to support you as a working wife. I want to at least reach your level in both status and wealth in the business world because you're already used to being a global billionaire. I would prefer it if we could continue enjoying our current lifestyle for the rest of our lives even if it's just me who's earning for us, you know. He chuckled. My wife is so thoughtful. So what I mean is, Iris took a deep breath before telling him, even if it's earlier than what I envisioned, I think that I'm ready to marry you now. Regardless of what others may think or say about us marrying this early, even if they accuse me of using you for personal gain, I don't want to care anymore. I don't care. For me, what's important is the two of us and our happiness. Exactly. He lifted her chin and rubbed her bottom lip with his thumb. I love you. Jean Liwei. I want to share the rest of my life with you. What's mine is yours. And everything that's mine, including myself and my body, are yours as well, he replied. Then he lowered his head and kissed her on the lips. It was tender and sweet yet filled with the promise of his eternal devotion to her. Once again, I ask you. Long Shilan, will you marry me? 
Oh yes. Comma. Big sis, hurry up. There's only one minute left in the countdown. Ming Li hollered while staring at the laptop screen. I'll be done soon. Zhou Mayer's voice called from inside the toilet. She was also known online as Captain Blackstar, the founder and president of the Black Stars fan club. Moments later, Zhou Mayer's hurried footsteps returned to where Ming Li was waiting with the laptop. They squeezed together on the small bed. Zhou Mayer recently moved into this old apartment from the university dorms. A fellow black star informed her about the available unit after learning where she was studying. The black star was the great-grandson of the landlord. She immediately grabbed the offer because the rent was many times cheaper than the dorms. The apartment was very old that there were times she thought it was haunted. Her unit was also very small, barely enough to fit a bed, desk and a closet, but it had a kitchenette and her own bathroom. It wasn't the most luxurious but she preferred it over the university dorms because she could finally enjoy some privacy. When she finished settling into the unit, Ming Li started coming over when the teenager had no school. Tonight would be the first time that Ming Li's parents allowed her to sleep over in the place. Zhou Mayer finally gained their trust, mainly because she continued to study hard in university while working part-time to support herself despite being a hardcore fan of Iris Long Ming Li's parents thought that she was a good role model for their teen daughter. 20 seconds left. Ming Li started squealing and bouncing on the squeaky bed. Zhou Mayer was also excited, her fingers busy typing on her phone. She was chatting with their similarly excited fellow black stars online. 10. 9. 8. 3. 2. 1. Kaiwea. It's here. Big sis, it's here. Ming Li almost fell off the bed in her overexcitement. This is itch. I can't hear. Zhou Mayer clicked on a link, increased the laptop sound volume, and turned off the lights in the room. Then a video started playing on the computer screen. Passionate Flames, by Jean Chonglin, featuring Iris Long. It was another big night in the music industry. Jean Chonglin and Iris Long's newest single together titled, Passionate Flames, finally debuted. When the release date was first announced, many artists who were also scheduled to release their music around this time actually changed their release dates to avoid going head-to-head -head against Jean Chonglin and Iris Long. Individually, the two of them were already tough opponents to beat. Together, they were considered to be absolute powerhouses in the current music scene. It was already expected for Jean Chonglin to dominate the music charts because of his superstar status and huge army of loyal fans. As for Iris Long, her renown might have only been very recent but her achievements so far had already outstripped Jean Chonglin's when he was at her age. Special Award for Creating New Musical Techniques The youngest and the first Chinese to win a Soleil d'Or Award for Best Soundtrack at the Summit International Film Festival. Performed with legendary world-class musicians Maestro Ludovico de Luca and Enrique Valdez. Each of these were all history-making achievements. Although Iris Long's current fame still couldn't compare to Jean Chonglin's, many industry experts predicted that it was only now a matter of time before she became a true powerhouse in the music industry in every sense of the word. It was no wonder that as soon as Passionate Flames was released, it quickly climbed up to number one trending online. The music video was on fire. Literally, you're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 634 The Dragon and the Phoenix Passionate Flames was a catchy R&B slash hip-hop song corresponding to the musical style which Jean Chonglin became known for in recent years when he reinvented himself and solidified his position as a music superstar in the country. It was a sensual song yet not vulgar. Right after watching the entire music video, the Black Stars and Jean Chonglin's army of fans flooded the internet with their comments. They gushed over the music video and began discussing it among themselves with much excitement. Wow! Prince Lin Lin and Boss Iris look so amazing in this MV. Look at their bodies. 
Lick the screen. Yum. Prince Lin Lin has always been a great dancer so I'm not surprised about his dancing skills. As for Boss Iris, I remember that she was also a rather good dancer back in her teen pop idol days but she looked so tacky before, like a girl who was trying too hard to become a wannabe sex symbol. I'm so relieved watching her in this MV. She's so sexy while dancing but still somehow managed to maintain her delicate femininity and elegance. How does she do it? It's because she's our boss Iris. Everything she decides to do, she does it like a queen. Damn, she can really move her body. CEO Jean is a lucky man. This choreography is top-notch. The best I've watched this year. That dance break. Holy. Ah, the fire. Is that real fire? Whoa. The sweat on their bodies. Those abs. Dies in happiness. Our boss Iris doesn't lose to Prince Lin Lin in dancing. That power and strength. One amateur music critic commented. Everyone's talking about the choreography and the dancing but my favorite is still the song itself. This just proves that both Jean Chong Lin and Iris Long are such versatile vocalists. They could sing almost anything. I'm especially impressed with Iris Long. This is a completely different genre than what she has showed us so far, from the cutesy sexy dance pop during her teen years, to the classical inspired ballad she mastered when she made her comeback, to the amazing rock classical fusion she did with Pandemonium, then the sweet love song, Shining Eyes which remains a hit until now. Singing this R&B slash hip-hop song, her voice doesn't sound out of place at all. Now let's talk about the song composition. The music is very Jean Chong Lin, something that we're used to listening from him. However, the quality of lyrics are quite different from his previous songs in this genre. This song is more poetic and meaningful. It's clear that he put a great deal of effort writing the lyrics. I suspect that he was influenced by Iris Long who is known not only for her soul-stirring musical composition but also for her thought-provoking lyrics. In conclusion, Passionate Flames is a delightful surprise from both Jean Chong Lin and Iris Long. Both of them have ventured out of their comfort zones with this song and slayed it with flying colors. But is it a masterpiece? I personally don't think so. Sure, it's awesome. It's a grand piece, I'll give it that, but certainly not a masterpiece. Nevertheless, I still give this song a 4 out of 5 stars. The Black Stars and Jean Chomlin's army of fans were thrilled by this amateur critic's review of their boss and Prince's new song, at the beginning. They hit the, like, button but when they read the last part of the review, they immediately turned berserk and hit, dislike, in addition to criticizing the critic rather harshly, even though he gave the song a high rating. You say it's not a masterpiece. Are you blind and deaf? Something must be wrong with your ears because passionate flames sound like a masterpiece to me. And that dancing? Epic. As more and more people watched the music video, many noticed its quality of production. The filmography of this MV is seriously lit. Movie quality, yo. There's an interesting background story and not just random dancing like other typical MVs shot in cheap studios. The budget for this must be expensive. This is Prince Lin Lin we're talking about. Of course Bright Summit will give a superstar like him a big budget for his projects. And he's collaborating with Iris Long, JJ's current protege. That ogre's record label is the one in charge of their collabs, so of course the quality is guaranteed. Afterwards, some hawk-eyed people who had already watched the music video many times started noticing symbols. Once someone mentioned them, the fans and even some experts in the music industry began hunting for all the symbols hidden in the music video and trying to decode them. At first glance, the music video seemed to be a passionate love story between the characters Iris Long and Jean Chong Lin were playing. On closer inspection, however, there were a lot of symbols that might be referring to Jean Li Wei instead, even though he didn't make any appearing in the MV at all. One example was a scene where Iris burst into flames and a phoenix-shaped fire shot out of her into the sky. 
Her fans knew that the Phoenix had become somewhat of her symbol when she made a successful comeback with her Rebirth album. The next scene added another layer of symbolism to the Phoenix that came out of Iris. A mighty flood dragon suddenly rose up from an icy ocean. The dragon and the phoenix seemed to be barreling towards each other, roaring mightily like they were about to engage in an epic battle. Contrary to expectations, however, the dragon and the phoenix didn't fight but instead wrapped around each other like lovers before flying up in the sky and disappearing in a spectacular heavenly fireworks. Do you remember the matching bangles boss Iris and CEO Jean always wear? If you look closely, they're engraved with a dragon and a phoenix to represent their eternal love. I bet my humble but mighty slippers that the flood dragon in the MV symbolizes CEO Jean while the phoenix is obviously our boss. OMG. I think you're right. This is freaking awesome. The dragon came out of an icy ocean. CEO Jean Liwei is known for his intimidating, icy cold expression. Yes, I think he's the Flood Dragon in this MV. Oh. Don't forget that during the red carpet event at the Summit International Film Festival in France, CEO Jean and Boss Iris also wore a dragon and phoenix-inspired suit and dress. Yes, I remember. They've always used the dragon and the phoenix as their symbols. This particular scene only lasted for a few seconds in the music video yet it ended up being dissected again and again as people tried to extract more meaning from the dragon and phoenix symbols. There were also other symbols these obsessive fans and experts uncovered. Whether they were intended or not, neither Iris Long nor Jean Chonglin had confirmed yet. JJ's record label and Bright Summit also kept their silence about this topic for now. In the meantime, the people were having a field day trying to decipher more symbols from the music video. In just one day, the song, Passionate Flames, by Jean Chonglin, featuring Iris Long shot up to the top and became number one in the daily best-selling rankings of various online music stores and streaming websites and apps. Dot you're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 635 Iris Effect Friday A motorcade of shiny, black cars escorted two large executive vans. The vehicles moved slowly because the road was packed with excited and screaming people. Security personnel tried controlling the huge crowd while the motorcade passed by the TV station's front gates. Moments later, people from several blocks away heard a thunderous noise of human voices screaming, shouting, yelling, and shrieking. It was so loud that the air seemed to vibrate. They thought that a tragic accident occurred before realizing that the noise sounded excited rather than frightened. Back at the road in front of the TV station, Iris Long and Jean Chonglin waved at their fans outside the windows of their respective vans. They were the ones being escorted by the impressive motorcade and the objects of adoration of the huge crowd. Based on past experiences, the management of the TV program Music Fest tonight requested for Iris Long and Jean Chonglin to arrive together instead of separately because they had no confidence that their staff would be able to handle two separate instances of a huge crowd of fans going wild. In addition, the two celebrities were also told not enter though the front like usual because the management already anticipated that the crowd this time would be much larger than the previous times the two performed on the show. It wouldn't be safe for either Iris Long and Jean Chunglin's teams or for their fans. Not only them. It also wouldn't be safe for any of the TV station staff or for the other arriving celebrities. Although both Iris Long and Jean Chunglin liked taking the time to interact with their fans in person, they had to comply this time because Bright Summit Entertainment Company wasn't taking any chances and tightened security protocols around them in response to what happened to them during the bomb incident. The two of them were currently this year's top best-selling musicians under the talent management company, so it was only expected that Bright Summit would prioritize their safety after such a horrifying attack. The back entrance of the TV station was already secured just for them. No other artists performing at the music program tonight were given this kind of special treatment. Treating Jean Chung Lin as a VIP was already expected, he was a superstar, so nobody complained. What about Iris Long? 
she was no superstar. However, she had already gained enough prestige through winning multiple awards this year, two of them history makers, first, the Special Technical Award for Creating New Musical Techniques, and second, the Soleil d'Or Award for Best Soundtrack in the Samet International Film Festival. As a result, many serious artists in the country's music industry now admired and respected her. There was a notable shift in the kind of music the new, young artists who just debuted were releasing. Instead of the typical, simplistic, catchy pop music designed to appeal to most of the general population, there was a rise in newly debuted artists who were releasing lyrical and emotional ballads, purely instrumental music, experimental fusion of genres, and also attempting to successfully sing sustained high notes or even whistle notes. JJ had been recorded on tape bragging that this was all because of Iris Long's influence. His friend, the notable music critic DJ Song, had called this trend the Iris effect. Soon after, other critics and industry experts followed suit and began using the term to describe this new phenomenon in the country's music scene. This kind of shift was considered unprecedented because record labels usually wouldn't take a gamble of veering away from tried and true methods that they had been using throughout the years, especially when it came to new artists who were just debuting. But Iris Long and JJ changed all of that. JJ had given Iris Long an unimaginable degree of creative freedom, even going so far as allowing her to experiment with almost each of her music releases since her showbiz comeback. Many called JJ insane, yet look who was laughing now and basking in the success of his protege. Their partnership had now reached a near legendary status in the music industry to the point that many new artists were choosing JJ's record label as their first choice. Unfortunately, Iris Long's blinding success story made them forget about JJ's notoriety in the music industry. Not everyone had Iris Long's guts in butting heads directly with the temperamental music producer. There had been quite a few disillusioned new artists who ran away in tears after experiencing JJ's bad temper and his honest but vicious criticisms. Given how respected Iris Long had become in the country's music industry after her comeback, even directly influencing the latest new artists' musical styles, nobody dared to protest against her receiving the same VIP treatment as Jean Chong Lin who was a superstar. Besides, she was currently in a music collaboration with him, not to mention that almost everyone in the country knew that they were eventually going to become siblings-in-law. The two VIPs and their teams were personally welcomed by director He and other staff of Music Fest tonight and escorted them to the two best dressing rooms. Along the way, Iris noticed that her female bodyguard would always hold her arm and steady her whenever there were stairs even though she was perfectly balanced. This wasn't the only thing that she observed. She wasn't allowed to carry a single thing. Whenever she picked up something and intended to carry it, Dom and her bodyguards would freak out and snatch the guilty item from her hands as if it weighed 500 kilos. Whenever she asked for a drink, a wide variety of non-alcoholic beverage choices would arrive within two seconds including some healthy fruits and snacks that she didn't ask for. Another bizarre thing was that one of her bodyguards now carried a foldable chair. What's that for? she asked. This is for the mistress to sit down when you feel tired standing up, he replied. Oh. Okay. Thanks. She didn't think too much about it but after noticing more of these things, they began adding up and confusing her. It felt like Dom and her bodyguards had become extra protective of her yet at the same time gentle to her as if she was fragile. Why are you all acting like this? Iris asked Dom in a whisper. Sir Boss instructed us to make sure that you don't strain or tire yourself, he whispered. Huh. Why would he do that? I'm fine. You know that the doctor already pronounced me healthy, her eyes widened as realization set in. Oh. E he he. Dom grinned but his eyes quickly became moist. He looked like he was about to cry. Boss, are you really? Shush your mouth. Not here, she immediately stopped him before looking around to make sure that nobody heard their conversation. We'll talk later, okay? Dom nodded. What are you two whispering about over there? Tang Yi suddenly asked. Iris smiled at her manager. Nothing. 
Tang Yi looked at her for two seconds before instructing the makeup artist and hairstylist to start working on Iris. Fortunately, the manager was too busy communicating with the show's staff and coordinating with Jean Chonglin's team to ask Iris more questions. Iris sighed in relief, her hand subconsciously touching her flat stomach. Thought you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 636 Passionate Flames Part 1 Welcome back to Music Fest tonight, the male host said after the commercial break. Wild, loud and desperate screams could be heard clearly from the audience. We're now down to our final performers of the night, the female host spoke next. I think you all know who they are, yes. Yeesius. Hurry up. We can't wait anymore. Kaiaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
you were the one who grabbed my heart. And stole right it in front of my eyes. I could not even struggle at all. So why do I feel no regret at all? The music became richer as more instrumental elements were added. The beat became a little stronger, a little more urgent, a little more intense. Jean Chung Lin did a body roll while Iris Long tossed her long, wavy hair in the air just in time as the stage lit up with real fire. The fiery illumination made them look wilder, dangerous, and sensual. The two were perfectly synchronized as they danced like a pair of lovers, making everyone, not just the Black Stars and Jean Chonglin's army of fans, go even wilder. Jean Chonglin sang to his beautiful partner, thrusting his chest in a panty-drenching hip-hop move. My heart is your possession. Yet I want it no other way. Iris did the same move, looking alluring and graceful at the same time. Her voice rose higher, giving another dimension to the catchy melody. Your love is filling my heart. Filling me completely. The two sang together. Just the way it's supposed to be. The heat from the fire surrounding them and the intensity of their movements made them sweat. It spritzed from their bodies every time they moved sharply, making all the people watching them feel breathless. Iris dropped to the ground on her back while Jean Chong Lin stood behind her. Every time he moved his hand, the part of Iris' body which was directly above it would move as well, as if his hand was holding a magnetic force. Then the monitor behind the stage suddenly lit up and showed a fire phoenix rising from the point where Iris was lying on the ground. Comma. You're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 637 Passionate Flames Part 2 Jean Chonglin's voice also hit the high notes, adding some growl to match the more intense melody and stronger beat. You look like a phoenix. Risen from the ashes once more. I don't even care about my body burning. You fill my mind every moment. He helped Iris to her feet in a smooth dance move while she sang the next lines of the chorus. Even if you burn my life out. I will burn into passionate flames. Just like my love for you. Burning fiercer than ever before. The fire phoenix on the big monitor spread its massive wings and began flying around the entire studio. Amazed exclamations sounded from the audience as they applauded the high-quality projection on the big studio's walls and ceiling. However, their attention soon returned to their Prince Lin Lin and Boss Iris who sang and danced together on the burning stage. My heart is your possession. Yet I want it no other way. Your love filling my heart. Filling me completely. Just the way it's supposed to be. So here we are bearing witness to love. My ring just like a collar. By this point, the two looked like their bodies had been oiled. The flames on the stage became stronger, making them glisten even more. Their fans' throats became dry as they watched the two move their amazing bodies to the beat of the music. Showing the world I'm yours. So gods bear witness to our love. And no interference will result in a price. No mortal or immortal could pay. Iris Long jumped and Jean Chong Lin caught her in a rumble-like move mixed with hip-hop. Jean Chong Lin, for you are mine, my love. Iris Long and like my ring has told the world before. Both, I belong to you and only you. Their voices rose higher together. Then higher. And higher, higher, still higher until the final highest note. Their pitches rose in a total of five semitone increments, making their fans burst into tears and goosebumps. Jean Chonglin's fans were especially proud of him because this was perhaps the first time that they heard him sing such high and sustained notes before. He really went above and beyond for this second music collaboration with Iris Long who was known for her impressive whistle notes. After the deceptively simple yet highly demanding harmonized vocal acrobatics of the pair, the music changed as the hip-hop element took over and the song entered a dance break. The backup dancers retreated out of sight, leaving only Jean Chong Lin and Iris long alone together on the stage. Then rain started pouring from the ceiling, immediately drenching the two of them. 
The once blazing fires surrounding them weakened to sputtering embers yet didn't completely go out. At the same time, the huge monitor behind the stage lit up once again and a thunderous roar reverberated as a mighty flood dragon rose from the flooded floor. Iris Long and Jean Chonglin danced under the pouring rain. Water splashed with their every step and spritzed with every turn. They thrust their hips and chests, rolled their bodies, and tossed their heads. Jean Chonglin even did a somersault while Iris Long twisted her hips in a belly dance hip hop fusion move. Just a few moments ago, they impressed everyone with their vocal mastery. Now, they were impressing everyone with their superb dancing skills. A high-pitched roar sounded and the flames on the stage began burning fiercely once again. The fire phoenix flew back to the stage and the mighty flood dragon welcomed it with a deep, triumphant roar. As the projections of the two immortal creatures met and wrapped around each other like lovers, Iris Long and Jean Chonglin performed a series of powerful synchronized moves before ending the dance break. By this time, plenty of the audience members had already fainted from overexcitement and overstimulation. One was even twitching on the floor and foaming in the mouth but still had a big smile on her face due to the happiness of witnessing such an epic performance. Already anticipating such alarming scenes from past experiences when Jean Chong Lin and Iris Long performed on the show before, the TV program had increased the number of first aid responders stationed in the studio. The people who fainted were quickly carried away and taken care of. However, a handful of them woke up in the middle of being carried away. They fought the first aid responders who were helping them because they wanted to return to their seats in order to watch the performance until the end. The responders were speechless but didn't stop them because they too wanted to finish watching the amazing performance as well. Back on the stage, the performance had now reached climax. The projections of the fire phoenix and the flood dragon roared together before flying upwards. Then fireworks exploded around the stage as the two immortal creatures disappeared. The stormy rain had stopped and was replaced by a gentle drizzle instead. Even the blazing flames around the stage appeared softer. Then suddenly, a rainbow projection lit up in magical sparkles just above the performers on the stage, eliciting another wave of amazed exclamations from the audience. Jean Chonglin and Iris Long sang the final lines of the song together, their pitches lighter and sweeter, yet still sounding passionate. Their powerful and intense dance moves also transitioned into slower and smoother movements. My heart is in your possession. Yet I want it no other way. Iris Long looked directly into the camera and sang her heart out, conveying the words to the man she wanted to spend the rest of her life with. She knew that he was watching her on TV right now. Jean Chong Lin sang with her but all she could think about was the older brother, Jean Li Wei. Her man, her lover, the one who always lit the passionate flames inside her. Filling me up completely just the way it's supposed to be. The song finally ended. Iris lifted her wrist and kissed her LX bangle, her lips touching the engraved dragon. The diamond ring on her finger sparkled under the spotlights. Comma. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 638 Good Auspicious Date Jean Corporation. A standing ovation followed Jean Chonglin and Iris Long's epic performance. The roaring applause was perfectly transmitted through the huge flat screen television mounted on the wall. Jean Li Wei smiled as his baby girl looked directly at him through the TV screen and mouthed the words, This is for you, darling, before waving and bowing to the audience. Of course, he already knew that her passionate and sensual performance was for him. Before the bomb incident, she tried rehearsing the song and dance in front of him but her sexiness always made him snap and lose control. He grabbed her and pushed her down the floor to make love with her before she could even finish. After many instances of it happening, he suspected that she was doing it on purpose to seduce him. Not that he was complaining. Now that he watched the full performance, complete with the amazing stage effects, blood rushed towards his lower region. There was no one as beautiful, talented, and sexy as his baby girl for him. 
watching his brother Jean Chonglin singing and dancing such a sensual and passionate song with his woman, Jean Liwei couldn't help but feel jealous. However, she already took the time before to reassure him that he would be the only one she would be thinking all throughout the performance so there was no need for him to feel jealous of his own brother. Besides, she was the one who suggested the idea of adding the phoenix and dragon symbolisms into the music video and the live performance to honor their relationship even though the song was written by Jean Chonglin. The creative team behind the making of the music video thought that it was an excellent idea, so in the end, Jean Chonglin gave in because he too admitted that it was indeed a great idea. He still sulked a lot after that, though. Jean Liwei appreciated the inclusion of the phoenix and the dragon. He already long treated them as the symbols representing his love he shared with her. His thoughts behind it might be over the top, but he didn't care. For him, she was the phoenix queen showing everyone her magnificence while he was the dragon king always protecting her. Their love was eternal. The inclusion of these symbols into the music video made him feel like he was also a part of the song, and in turn, lessened the jealousy he felt at his younger brother for writing such a sensual song and dragging his baby girl to help him sing it. He leaned back on his opulent leather seat in front of his massive office desk. His full attention was on the post-performance interview. He frowned, thinking that the hosts were taking too long asking questions. His baby girl was drenched. If they wouldn't give her something warm to cover herself up, then they should at least hurry up and end the interview so that she could return backstage. If his baby girl fell ill after this, he would make sure to sue the crap out of the TV program. His frown deepened when his eyes fell on her semi-exposed flat stomach. He almost didn't let her perform tonight because he was too worried about her possible condition. They still didn't know whether she was pregnant or not. This song required her to sing and dance at the same time. And the dancing was quite intense, too. What if she was really pregnant and ended up overexerting herself? Worried, they called his second brother, Dr. Wang Yingjie, and expressed their concern. He assured them that Iris would be fine because she was young, healthy, and fit, and regularly worked out. In his opinion, her body would be able to handle the performance as long as she didn't do it too hard or too long. Also, he said that as long as she felt fine, then she would most likely be just fine. However, he suggested that he would personally check on her the day after the performance to make sure that she was really alright. Maybe they could even try getting her a pregnancy test, although Wang Yingjie thought that it was still too early. Only upon receiving Wang Yingjie's assurance did Jin Liwei feel comfortable enough to let his baby girl perform on the stage tonight. But he still informed Dominic and his subordinates to take extra care of her and to let her rest as much as possible. He would always worry about her regardless of whether she was pregnant or not. Sensing the uneasiness in his boss, Su Tian served him a cup of hot, calming herbal tea. He also watched the second master and Miss Long's performance on TV, temporarily pausing their remaining tasks for the day. They originally planned to finish early today so that Jean Liwei could watch tonight's episode of Music Fest tonight in the comfort of his own mansion and also be the one to welcome his baby girl home this time after so long of returning late. Unfortunately, a serious issue in the marketing department came up in the afternoon. All the executives had to gather together in a meeting in order to resolve it. In the end, Jean Liwei's original plan of going home early had to be scrapped. As the one in charge of the marketing department, Rose Young apologized for the issue before immediately proposing some solutions to the problems. She was competent in this way. Still, she only apologized briefly but didn't say that it was her fault. The meeting extended into the evening and only just finished. If Jean Liwei didn't drive his fellow executives with an iron fist, he might have missed Music Fest tonight. Rose Young suggested that they eat dinner together but Jean Liwei refused and returned to his office to switch on the TV. There was no way he was going to miss his baby girl's performance. Back to the present, Music Fest tonight finally ended. Jean Liwei sipped his hot tea, already feeling calmer now that his baby girl's performance was over. She looked alright. What a relief. Ketchup, monitor your mom. 
any sign of pain or discomfort from her, immediately order her security team to send her directly to the nearest hospital. Understood? I, I, Daddy. Meow. Afterwards, Jean Liwei switched off the TV and faced the documents on his desk once again. Su Tian was also about to return to his own tasks. However, Jean Liwei didn't resume working. He stared at the documents for almost a minute before sighing and pushing them away. These can wait until tomorrow, he said before standing up. Su Tian was at a loss for a moment before quickly recovering. Understood, President. Let's go home. Yes, President. They left the office and was about to enter the elevator when Jin Li Wei suddenly stopped and turned to Su Tian. Oh, I almost forgot. Coordinate with Dominic regarding the schedules of both Shilan and I, find a good, auspicious date for a wedding before winter when both of us are free, preferably by next month. I want Shilan to be my legal wife as soon as possible. Su Tian tripped on his own feet and almost smashed his face on the wall. Comma. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 639 Scarlet Woman Dragon Palace Home Number 10 The next morning. Oh, so I'm not pregnant after all, Iris said. She felt a pair of strong arms tightening around her waist. She turned and looked at her darling's face who was holding her on his lap. They were sitting on the couch in their bedroom suite's living area. This time, she couldn't read his expression. The test came out negative today but that doesn't mean anything at this point, Wang Yingjie replied, looking at his third brother who was hiding his emotions behind an unreadable expression. Nevertheless, as one of his best friends, he could vaguely tell what his third brother was feeling. He sighed and continued speaking, I already told the two of you that it's still too early. We'll do this test again after your missed period, if you miss it. Is that all right with you, Shilan? Yes, of course. She paused and tilted her head to the side. But ever since I woke up from coma for the first time, there are times that I have irregular periods especially when I become too busy working. I was told that it's because of stress or perhaps some remaining hidden damage from the accident. Will that be a problem? Wang Yingjie thought for a moment before answering. No, I looked at your medical records. You're healthy and fit unless you're in an accident that leave you injured like what happened during the bomb, anyway, let's just do the pregnancy test again about a couple of weeks after the date that the two of you had unprotected sex. He turned to Jin Li Wei. That's the day you called me, right? N. Jin Li Wei nodded, remembering that he indeed called his second brother after his baby girl left his office after their wild and intense lovemaking which resulted in the torn condom. All right. Wang Yingjie took out his phone and looked at his schedule before making an appointment with the couple for the next pregnancy test. With that done, he started organizing his medical equipment and stuffing them in a shiny, metal-wheeled luggage. At the same time, he was advising Iris not to overwork herself while they weren't sure yet if she was really pregnant or not. Afterwards, the couple walked with Wang Yingjie to the grand foyer to see him off. He bid them goodbye and drove off in his own car. A yawn broke his usual serious expression. He performed a nine-hour surgery which only ended earlier that morning. He hadn't slept a wink yet. Although exhausted, he still dropped by his third brother's place after leaving the hospital in order to fulfill his promise to check on Iris. Jean Liwei had been pestering him almost every day ever since the couple had an accidental unprotected sex. Wang Yingjie was a surgeon and an extremely busy one at that, not to mention that the hospital that he worked at was one of the biggest and busiest in the country. He didn't have a lot of free time. In addition, he wasn't an OBGYN. Despite this, he still granted his third brother's request just because they were sworn brothers, the best of friends. To him, doing this much was nothing because it was for family. Iris had her own OBGYN but at this stage, Wang Yingjie understood why Jin Liwei would consult him instead. Both Jin Liwei and Iris were public figures. 
people always wanted to know what was going on in the couple's private lives. If it was discovered that Iris Long became pregnant out of wedlock, it would incite another scandal for her, even though she was already engaged to Jean Leeway. There were always malicious people out there waiting to pounce on the smallest opportunity to pull Iris down and tarnish her increasingly glowing reputation, especially since she had offended a lot of people during her teenage years in the past. Wang Yingjie was family, her OBGYN wasn't, in short, an outsider. This was why Jean Liwei preferred for him to conduct the pregnancy test on Iris. The couple could have just used a regular home pregnancy test but given the couple's preference for accurate results, Wang Yingjie didn't mind stepping in for the role even though he was a surgeon and something like this wasn't his specialty. He also knew that the couple trusted him more than any other doctor in the world. I can't wait to sleep on my bed, he talked to himself so as not to fall asleep while driving. I still have another long surgery scheduled tonight. Another yawn. He smirked, remembering how his third brother almost half-carried Iris every time she walked. Wang Yingjie had no doubt that if Iris really got pregnant, there was an extremely high chance that Jean Liwei would tie her to his waist and carry her all around, not letting her walk or do anything strenuous, until she gave birth to their first human baby. His third brother had an innate controlling nature while Iris, as far as Wang Yingjie observed, was a headstrong and independent woman who liked to do her own thing. It was a wonder how these two fell in love with each other without constantly butting heads. If Iris really got pregnant, it would be interesting how she would deal with an ultra-protective Jean Liwei. She might just go crazy and scratch his face off. Wang Yingjie chuckled before another yawn assaulted him again. He drove on the road fighting sleep but in a good mood. Comma. Zheng Ancestral Residence. Three figures, two females and one male, sat around a low table in silence. Their straight backs, impassive expressions, and their obvious pride in their noble roots only magnified the ancient aura of the place. The lady in traditional clothing was performing a tea ceremony. Her practiced movements were cultured and elegant. A delicate aroma of tea soon wafted in the room, as she served a tiny cup each to all of them. They sipped their tea in silence, enjoying the exquisite taste of one of the most expensive and rarest teas in the world. Zheng Suin put down her teacup on the table without making any noise. Then her cold eyes fell on her son sitting in front of her. The custody battle starts in a few days. It wasn't a question but a statement. Nevertheless, Long Hui still answered after putting down his own teacup on the table. Yes, mother. I need to personally appear in court or else the judge will dismiss the case. Long Meng also placed down her teacup. The elder turned to Long Hui. Young Master Hui, you and that boy's mother have already separated before marrying. Zheng Suin, thank goodness for that. That kind of lowly woman isn't fit to be my daughter-in-law. Long Huey's jaw tightened. His hands under the low table clenched into tight fists. However, his face remained expressionless. He was quiet, not replying to his mother's harsh words. Long Meng nodded, agreeing with Zheng Suin. Young Master Hui, that woman and her boy have been living with young Miss Xilan. It also looks like they are close to that Scarlet Woman, Wei Lan. Scarlet Woman Zheng Suin snorted. There is no need for euphemisms when describing that homewrecker, Elder Meng. Wei Lan is a slut. A big slut. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 640 Damaged Free Very true. Long Meng nodded and took another sip of tea before putting her cup down once again. Young Master Hui, we all know that Wei Lan is a bad influence. Now that she's close to that female bodyguard and her boy, it's not surprising that she already corrupted them to turn against you. Her boy. Long Hui's voice was low and threatening. That's my boy too, Grand Aunt Meng. Son, don't follow your father's footsteps. Illegitimate children aren't worth it. They're nothing but innately damaged fruits born from immorality. 
They'll never be as good as pure fruits like you, a legitimate child, born from a proper and legal marriage, Sheng Suin lectured her son. Long Hui frowned, his already clenched fists tightened even more. Damaged fruits? What do you mean by that, mother? Are you saying that my son Long Jun, your grandson, is damaged? Watch your tone. Is that how you speak to your own mother? Grandson? I will never admit an illegitimate child born from such a lowly woman as my grandson. Bam! The two women flinched when Long Hui slammed both his hands on the table, causing the china tableware to jump, clinking and clanking in a dangerous manner. Nothing broke, but some tea spilled on the table. How dare you act like that in front of your mother and grand aunt? Have you forgotten your manners after siring a bastard? Zheng Suin was enraged. But Long Hui was even more enraged. Whether you like it or not, Long Jun is my son. Half of him came from me. He's my flesh and blood so I will never abandon him. I'll fight to the end to get him from Ying, from Jiang Ying Yu. I'll raise my own son because I'm his only father. Nobody else. Not Jin Li Wei and certainly not that snake Lin Yi Hen. He was breathing heavily after saying his piece. The two women looked shocked seeing him lose his temper. Zheng Suin was the first one to recover. She raised her chin and managed to look down on her son, even though he was towering over them right now. Are you done? Long Hui finally realized the disrespect he showed to his parent and elder. However, he didn't apologize. He meant what he said. Long Jun was his son. He wouldn't tolerate anyone insulting his son just because Long Jun was illegitimate, even his own mother, Zheng Suin. In this aspect, Long Hui was very similar to his father, Long Tingfei. Ahem. Why don't you sit back down, young Master Hui? Long Meng said in a diplomatic tone. Aya. Both of you are mother and son. There is no need to clash against each other. We are all on the same team here. Long Hui sat back down and lowered his eyes. He still didn't apologize but it was obvious that he already calmed down. Zheng Suin sniffed coldly but didn't force him to apologize. Long Meng sighed in relief. All of them took a sip of tea, ignoring the spillage on the table. Silence once again descended in the room for almost a couple of minutes. Long Meng cleared her throat, interrupting the uncomfortable silence. Young Master Hui, I commend you for your kind and honorable heart. Such a responsible man to think of your child. Indeed, you are the only one worthy to become the next head of the Long Industries and the clan. She watched as the tight expressions of both Cheng Suin and Long Hui eased up after hearing her compliments. Indeed, the two of them were mother and son. Long Meng inwardly released a sigh of relief. Young Master Hui, I understand your strong sense of responsibility towards your child. However, I also agree with your mother to a certain extent. That child is, without a doubt, a Ba, was born out of marriage, Long Meng corrected herself after receiving a fierce glare from Long Hui. She felt indignant that a brat like him would disrespect her, an elder, but this wasn't the time to act on her own feelings. Thus, she swallowed her own pride for the greater good of the Long clan. To her and their allies, Long Hui was the eldest son of Long Tingfei from the first marriage. Therefore, he was the rightful heir and the only one suitable to become the next head of the clan and the family business. You know how it is in our circles, she continued. Even if you have acknowledged that child, he would never be accepted by everyone, especially those who are from our fellow aristocratic clans. That poor child would be bullied and made fun of for being a Ba, illegitimate. And when your wife gives birth to your legitimate child, his position will only become even more precarious. Also, it's unfair to your wife to bring a child from the outside. Your fiancé is from a respectable and aristocratic family like ours. It's a great disrespect to her and her family to force her to raise a child that isn't hers. Zheng Sui nodded, impressed at the elder's persuasive words. She stayed quiet, allowing Long Meng to talk sense to her son. 
Long Hui also remained quiet. His expression showed that he was in deep thought, pondering over his elder's words. A furrow formed between his brows. Encouraged by his expression, Long Meng appealed to Long Hui's paternal emotions in order to force her points home. You love your son, don't you, young Master Hui? Then isn't it best to protect that poor child from suffering? It is enough that you acknowledge him as your flesh and blood son and give financial support so that he could at least live a good life and have a decent future. There is no need to bring him to our side and allow him to suffer from being bullied because nobody but you accept him. Long Huey's frown deepened. The two women waited for his response. After waiting almost five minutes, Zheng Suin ran out of patience. Son, your grand aunt is right. Drop the custody case. Comma, you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 641 Reigning Emperor His mother's words woke Long Hui from his self-absorption. What the hell was he doing? Was he seriously considering Elder Long Meng's suggestion to protect his son by leaving him alone? If Jiang Yingyu was the only one raising their son by herself, then perhaps he would agree. But then, if that was the case, he wouldn't have left her in the first place. He would have married her and live a happy life raising their son together while also working on getting her pregnant again. The problem was that she wasn't raising their son by herself. Xiulan and Jin Liwei were there interfering with their lives, hiding them, and also influencing them to distance themselves from him. How hateful. Not to mention that fucker Lin Yihan. So what if he was an agricultural tycoon who was wealthier, more influential and stable than him? That was only right now. Once he became the next head of Long Industries, he would be closer in defeating that cheating motherfucker in terms of wealth and status. Lin Yihan was nothing more than a snake who stole another man's woman and child. How immoral. His mother's words echoed inside his head. Drop the custody case drop it drop it drop it drop it. Never. He would fight to the bitter end until he gained custody of his son. He would never become like his father who left his children alone, contenting himself with giving them generous financial support. And most importantly, he would never allow another man except for himself to become a father figure to his son. He already accepted Jin Liwei as his son's godfather but that was before he fell out with his sister Xiulan. Now all he wanted to do was punch Jin Liwei in the face for claiming to be his son's papa. As for Lin Yihan, absolutely no fucking way. He would never allow that snake to obtain Jiang Yingyu or his son. No, mother. I won't drop the custody case. Long Hui's tone was final. You. Zheng Suin was once again enraged. Long Meng was surprised that her persuasion didn't work. She was certain that just a few seconds ago, he was already on the verge of agreeing with her. Discontent filled her. The bastard child must not live with the young master. He would only become a hindrance to the young master's path of becoming the next head of the Longs. A firstborn illegitimate child would never be accepted because he would threaten the position of the true legitimate heir later on. This must not happen. However, it would also not be good to lose the custody case if the young master was really determined to go through with it. Losing was not an option, especially since both the Longs and the Zhengs cared so much about face. If the young master had to do something, he needed to emerge victorious. Zheng Suin and Long Meng looked at each other. They knew with just a glance what each other's thoughts were regarding the matter. Son. Mother, I've already made up my mind. It's useless to try to persuade me otherwise. Zheng Suin closed her eyes and took a few deep breaths to calm her anger. When she opened her eyes, her cold expression had returned. Fine. Since you're so insistent on taking responsibility for that bastard child, then so be it. Long Hui exhaled the breath he didn't notice that he was holding. Young Master Hui, are you confident in winning the custody case? Long Meng asked. Of course my son is going to win. 
there's no way that he's going to allow himself to lose face in such a trivial case. Do you really think that a lowly slut like that bodyguard with such a poor background will win against my son, the firstborn and the true heir of Long Industries? Long Meng didn't reply but instead looked at Long Hui instead. Long Hui's anger was once again provoked and his mother called the mother of his child a slut but he tamped it down. Although he now hated Jiang Yingyu for cheating on him with that fucker Lin Yihan and for choosing to be on his sister's side rather than stay with him, he still couldn't forget her amazing body and the way she whimpered with passion whenever he slammed himself inside her again and again. For a moment, his mind was filled with vivid images of him pouring his seed inside her, impregnating her so that she would never forget that he was the man who fathered her child. Only him, Long Hui. His current fiancé was nothing compared to Jiang Yingyu. He couldn't even experience 10% of the pleasure Jiang Yingyu usually gave him with her body whenever he fucked his current fiancé. He always had to close his eyes and imagine that it was Jiang Yingyu he was fucking in order to come. It came to a point that using his hand while fantasizing about Jiang Yingyu felt more satisfying than fucking his fiancé. Before he knew it, he had a raging erection in his trousers. Fortunately, the table obstructed the view of his lower body from his mother and grand aunt. Well? Are you not confident? His mother's words interrupted his lewd thoughts. He mentally shook his head to clear his mind. If it's against Jiang Yingyu alone, I'm confident. But she has Xilan and Jin Liwei backing her. They're no easy opponents. Long Meng, true. Jin Liwei is a powerful man. The genes might originally be merchants. Jing Suin, merchants are nothing but lowly commoners. Long Meng, yes, they were commoners but now they rule the country's business world. And as their head, Jin Liwei is akin to an emperor. Jing Suin and Long Hui scowled at the description of Jin Liwei as an emperor but they couldn't refute Long Meng's words. This was the modern times. And indeed, Jin Liwei was the reigning emperor of the country's business world. Comma. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 642 Unwelcome Face It's not only Jin Liwei who I'm concerned about. Xilan is also... Long Hui was about to reveal to his mother and grand-aunt that his half-sister was a cross-academy student and therefore had the backing of the legendary school of geniuses but stopped himself in time. His pride didn't allow anyone to view his youngest sister who he was currently at odds with as more superior than him, even to his mother and allies. This was important information but he just couldn't bring himself to reveal it for fear that Long Meng would turn her back on him and support his half-sister instead to become the next head of the clan and the family business. That little slut is what? Continue what you're saying, son, Zheng Suin prompted him. Long Meng also waited for him to say more. However, he only shook his head and swallowed the words that he almost blurted out. Nothing. Forget it. Just know that Jiang Yingyu has a strong backing and it won't be easy for me to get custody of my son. Zheng Suin looked at him with obvious disapproval. Long Meng sighed in disappointment. Long Hui ignored them. His mind was already made up. Even though the odds were against him, he would still fight for his son's custody. Seeing the determination in her son's eyes, Zheng Suin's cold heart softened, but only for a little bit. Indeed, if that lowly female bodyguard had the backing of Jin Liwei, then it would be difficult for her son to get custody of that bastard child. As much as she disapproved of the bastard, she wouldn't allow her son to lose against that female bodyguard of poor breeding. If her son couldn't win in court, there were other ways to get what he wanted. Her eyes flashed with a scheming light. Comma. That weekend, Long Hui dropped off his fiancée at a cosmetic clinic for her monthly body maintenance appointment. As he watched her disappear in the inner rooms of the clinic with the cosmetic nurse, all he could think about was how Jiang Yingyu had such an amazing fit and muscled body without resorting to costly and artificial procedures like his current fiancée. He mentally scolded himself upon realizing that he was thinking of Jiang Yingyu yet again. 
With a scowl on his face, he left the clinic and headed to the main lobby downstairs using the elevator. The cosmetic clinic was located inside a high-end commercial building. There were other business offices from across different fields in the building, ranging from physicians, dentists, lawyers, private tutoring services, etc. Once Long Hui arrived in the lobby, an unwelcome face greeted his sight, worsening his mood even further. Lin Yihan just came out of a business partner's office when he saw Long Hui. He stopped in his tracks. Then he saw the man glare at him before walking away. Wait, he called out but was ignored. Mr. Long, wait. He ran after him. Long Hui finally stopped and turned back at Lin Yihan. His glare intensified. I want to talk to you, Lin Yihan said after catching up to him. I don't want to talk to a cheating snake like you. I never cheated, Mr. Long. Please, let's talk. The two men stood in front of each other. Long Hui continued to glare, as if doing so would murder the man in front of him, while Lin Yihan stood there in a calm and non-threatening manner. Their face-off caught the attention of passers-by. Long Hui was handsome and had a certain coolness about him associated with wealthy young masters. There was something delicate about his features, but it did nothing to lessen the intensity of his glare. On the other hand, Lin Yihan was tall and thin. He wasn't as good-looking as Long Hui but his gentle expression and amiable aura made him more attractive to other people. There was a sense of stability and comfort in him. Even though Long Hui was trying to kill him with his eyes, Lin Yihan didn't allow himself to be provoked, maintaining his calm instead. The two ignored the other people's sneaking glances at them. Lin Yihan waited for Long Hui's response. Five minutes, Long Hui finally replied. Lin Yihan nodded. Thank you. Follow me. He led Long Hui outside the commercial building to the cafe on the other side of the street. Various high-end boutiques sandwiched the classy café. A waiter welcomed the two of them and led them to a nice table by the windows. Oolong tea for me, please, Lin Yihan ordered without looking at the menu. The waiter jotted down his order. Long Hui looked at the menu. He also planned to order a drink from the tea section. Then he read that all the tea used in the café were from the brand Serenity Premium Tea. Serenity Premium Tea. Sounds familiar. Hmm. Then he remembered. Serenity Premium Tea was the tea brand his youngest half-sister was endorsing. In addition, it was owned by the scoundrel sitting in front of him. Lin Yihan. He looked at the fucker and glared once again. Sir. What would you like to drink? The waiter asked Long Hui. Coffee. Black, he replied with gritted teeth. Even though he wanted to drink tea, there was no way he was going to drink the tea from this fucker's company who tried to steal his woman and child. The waiter left to prepare their orders, leaving the two of them in an uncomfortable atmosphere. Speak. I don't have time to waste on a cheating snake like you, Long Hui said. Lin Yihan sighed at Long Hui's provocation. He didn't lose his temper. Mr. Long, I heard that you saw some photos and videos of Miss Jiang and I together with Little June at the mall. I want to tell you that we met each other that day by coincidence. There was nothing dishonorable about our chance meeting. Please remove your suspicions about us. I have no immoral intentions towards Miss Jiang and your son, he explained, you're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 643 Provoked Lin Yihan Long Hui didn't reply. At the mention of Jiang Yingyu and their son, he became too overcome by jealousy to listen in a rational manner to Lin Yihan's explanation. He just continued glaring at Lin Yihan instead. Lin Yihan could sense that his words weren't getting through Long Hui but didn't give up and continued explaining. He remembered Jiang Yingyu's heartbroken expression when the couple broke up because of the incriminating photos. Guilt consumed him, even though he knew very well that it wasn't his fault. He was innocent alongside Jiang Yingyu. 
Long Hui was just misunderstanding everything. If only the man would listen to him, then this painful issue would hopefully be resolved. I'm telling the truth. There's really nothing between Miss Jiang and I. We only consider ourselves as friends because of our respective relationships with my brother Li Wei and your sister Xiuan. Tell me, Lin Yihan. When was the last time you saw Ying Yu? Lin Yihan hesitated for a bit before deciding that honesty was the best policy at this point. He had no reason to lie, anyway. Earlier this week. My brother Li Wei and Xiulan invited the rest of our brothers and her friends to their place for dinner. It was just a regular gathering between friends. The ugly green monster growling inside Long Hui gave a raging roar. He only heard that Lin Yihan and Jiang Yingyu saw each other earlier this week. The rest of Lin Yihan's words were drowned by his poisonous jealousy. You motherfew. He was interrupted when the waiter arrived with their drinks. Oolong tea for Lin Yihan. Coffee for Long Hui. The waiter left them again. Lin Yihan picked up his cup and inhaled the tea's aroma. He nodded, pleased at the cafe's brewing quality of his company's tea. He appeared calm on the outside, but in actuality, he was anxious deep inside. Long Hui's repeated accusations couldn't help but affect him, yet he was still trying his best to remain calm. With a sigh in his heart, he sipped the hot tea in the hopes that it would relax him in this tense situation. As for Long Hui, he didn't touch his coffee at all. His hands were tightly clenched on his lap, trying to stop himself from swinging his fists towards Lin Yihan's calm face. After sipping his tea and placing his cup down, Lin Yihan began speaking to Long Hui again. He continued trying to explain that everything was just a misunderstanding and that nothing was going on between him and Jiang Yingyu but to no avail. Long Hui was adamant in believing that the two cheated on him. Thus, Lin Yihan changed tactics and began talking about the custody case instead. Your son, little June, is a wonderful child. He deserves all the happiness that could fit in his life. Although he's still a young child, something like this, a custody battle between his parents, will certainly scar him one way or another. This time, Lin Yihan's words managed to penetrate Long Hui's thick head. What are you trying to say? Long Hui asked in a tone filled with suspicion. Please think of your son. The kid still wants you. You're his father. Don't make it too hard on your son and to Miss Jiang. There's no need for a custody battle like this. It'll just hurt all the parties involved and worsen the situation. Long Hui remained quiet but his expression showed that he was finally listening, so Lin Yihan continued. How about you have a proper conversation with Miss Jiang, he suggested. I think it's better to talk everything out face to face about your relationship, your plans regarding your son, and try to resolve all the issues between you. Perhaps you may even reconcile, even if that's not possible, at least you'll stop treating each other like enemies. Although it's not common here in our country, it's still possible to have a joint custody or co-parenting arrangement just like in the West. Silence. Nobody spoke for five minutes. The atmosphere was so tense that the waiter who was headed their way to ask them how they were enjoying their drinks so far stopped himself and turned around instead. Are you done? Long Hui finally interrupted the uncomfortable silence in a flat tone. Yes. I've listened to what you've said. Now listen to me. All right. Long Hui leaned forward and narrowed his eyes before speaking in a low growl. My issue with Ying Yu and our son is none of your fucking business, Lin Yihan. You're the one who destroyed my family first. Don't act like you're doing everyone a favor by trying to persuade me to believe in the lies you concocted with Ying Yu. Both of you are cheating snakes. I'm going to take my son away from that cheating slut no matter what. Go stay in your farm with your potatoes and pigs. Don't bother me again. He stood up and left without looking back. Lin Yihan was left there alone with a dark expression. His usually gentle eyes were now simmering with cold fury. He could tolerate it when Long Hui continually provoked him. However, when Long Hui called Jiang Yingyu a cheating slut, 
something snapped inside Lin Yihan. Such a good woman, such a good mother, such a good person was far from a cheating slut. It was fortunate that Long Hui immediately left after saying his piece because if he didn't, Lin Yihan would have probably beaten the shit out of the unreasonable son of a bitch. Before this, he had hoped to persuade Long Hui to reconsider his decision to separate with Jiang Yingyu. Now, however, Lin Yihan didn't want such an asshole to return to her side. Long Hui didn't deserve such a good woman like Jiang Yingyu. Lin Yihan's protective nature now completely blanketed itself over Jiang Yingyu and Little Jun after his failed conversation with Long Hui. He hadn't realized it yet, but he already started treating the mother and son as his responsibility. Comma. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 644 Be Brave, Don't Cower. Dragon Palace Home Number 10. Ampalu. Ampalu. There's my boy. Come and give your beloved great grandpa a kiss, a familiar booming voice echoed in the grand foyer. A little boy ran towards the sprightly old man who caught him and tossed him up the air. The delighted child's laughter made everyone smile. An orange cat ran around the toddler and the old man, meowing loudly, while a fat gray cat reluctantly huffed and puffed its way towards the visitor to pay respects to an elder. Little Junjun, did you miss great grandpa? I want to know. Yes. Ha ha ha. Great grandpa missed you too, my boy. Were you a good boy? Yes, Ampa Lu. Junjun good boy. Grandpa Lu nodded. He looked very pleased with the child's answers. When little Jun gave him a wet kiss on the cheek, the old man became even happier. Carrying the toddler, Grandpa Lu walked inside the grand foyer, followed by ice cream and popcorn who finished paying their respects to him. He was too preoccupied enjoying his great-grandson that he ignored Iris and the others until they greeted him. He greeted them back but his expression showed his disinterest on them. At the moment, all he cared about was his beloved great-grandson, Little June. When Iris came into the picture, Lu Ziheo was tossed aside and Iris became Grandpa Lu's new favorite grandchild. He doted on her while also teaching her his genius ways of shamelessness in the business world. It was fortunate that his former favorite grandchild, Lu Ziheo, didn't mind or felt jealous but instead also doted on Iris as an older brother. But when little June came into the picture next, Grandpa Lu found his new favorite. This was a great grandchild after all, a higher level than a grandchild. If only he could have more great grandchildren to dote on, then Grandpa Lu could live the remainder of his precious years with happiness. It was so frustrating that his grandchildren were so slow in giving him great grandbabies. Was it so hard for those pinheads to make babies? What was wrong with them? He wanted to know. Bless Jiang Yingyu for coming into their lives and sharing little June with them. Now Grandpa Lu had a taste of what it was like to have a great grandbaby. As he expected, it felt awesome. Old man, you're so old already and yet you still have the guts to toss a child in the air and carry him. What if you break your back? Don't complain to us, then, a devilish voice teased from behind Grandpa Lu. What did you say, you punk? Who are you calling old? I want to know. Don't get overconfident just because you gained some muscles. Bah! I'm telling you that this old man is still many times stronger than you. You're still a hundred years too early to talk to me like that. Humph. Lu Ziheo emerged from the shadows. Nobody in the foyer noticed his arrival, not even Iris. His movements were silent and even his large, muscled frame would disappear in the dark if he wanted it. He entered the foyer after Grandpa Lu. His lips were curved in a devilish smirk. Big brother, Iris greeted him with a smile. She was happy that he came home again. They hadn't seen each other since the last time they spoke. He nodded at her, his eyes becoming gentler. Jean Liwei tightened his hold around her waist and pulled her closer to his body before also greeting his fifth brother with a nod. 
the couple was free today until mid-afternoon. Then they needed to return to their respective work. Later, they ate lunch in the indoor forest. The people present were Iris, Jean Liwei, Dom, Jiang Yingyu, Little Jun, Grandpa Lu, and Lu Ziheo. Everyone was having fun chatting while eating. They mostly talked about Iris' latest hit song with Jean Chonlin, Passionate Flames. There was one person who looked distracted, though. The others noticed, of course, but they pretended that nothing was amiss. After lunch, little June fell asleep earlier than usual for his afternoon nap. Playing with his great-grandpa and cat cousins tired him. Grandpa Lu carried the toddler just as the nanny arrived, carrying little June's sleepover luggage. All right, we'll get going now, Grandpa Lu announced. His booming voice didn't boom as usual so as not to wake up the child. Good thing the boy is fast asleep. He'll probably cry and won't want to leave you if I take him with me while he's awake. Jiang Yingyu felt reluctant. It must have been obvious from her expression because Grandpa Lu patted her shoulder. Don't worry, Yingyu my girl. Grandpa Lu will take care of your son. It'll only be for a few days. Why yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Why are you still calling me sir? Is this old man still a stranger to you? I want to know. Call me Grandpa Lu. Why yes, Ji Grandpa Lu, Jiang Yingyu replied in a shy tone, her cheeks turning a lovely shade of pink. Good, very good. They all walked Grandpa Lu and the sleeping little June to the front entrance. Jiang Yingyu's eyes were red and moist, although the rest of her face looked impassive. She was fighting tears because this would be the first time that her son would be sleeping over for a few days in another place by himself without her. In addition, the anxiety of tomorrow and the next few days loomed in her heart, almost making her feel suffocated. Grandpa Lu gave her a firm yet encouraging look. The lawyers will pick you up here tomorrow. Don't you worry, Inyu my dear. Nobody is allowed to take little Junjun away from you without your consent as long as I, your Grandpa Lu, is still alive. Iris stepped forward and patted Jiang Yingyu's back. I can't accompany you to court because I'll attract too much attention but you'll have our lawyers to protect your interests and little Jun's. You can depend on them. All you need to do is be brave and don't let yourself be bullied. Don't cower when facing Long Hui. Comma. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 645 Arrival at the Courthouse Hearing their words of support, Jiang Yingyu nodded. The uneasiness in her heart subsided for a bit. Bravery wasn't something that could be trained in an instant. But for the sake of her son, she would fight a painful battle against the man she used to love. It would probably crush her even more than she already had, but she was willing to bleed just so her son could have a happy life and bright future. She looked around and saw warm and loving people. This was family, regardless of whether they were connected by blood or not. They were now her son's family and hers as well. If something ever happened to her, Jiang Yingyu knew that they would love and take care of her son as if he was their own, especially little Jun's godparents, Shilan and Sir Li Wei. Little Jun belonged with these loving and supportive people, not the self-serving and toxic environment of the Long Clan. Thank you, everyone, she told them in her sincerest tone. Comma. Inside the car, Clover held Jiang Yingyu's cold, sweaty hands and squeezed it. You'll be fine, sis Yingyu. You're not alone. Jiang Yingyu smiled at her friend who took the time to accompany her today. She was very grateful to Clover who just showed up earlier that morning and announced that she would be coming to court with her. Clover should be very busy with her preparations for her France mission and would be flying in a couple of days but she still dropped everything to share Jiang Yingyu's burdens today. Their friends, the other members of the girl squad, also wanted to come but were unable to do so even if they wanted to. Iris was a popular celebrity. She would attract too much attention if she came. Her presence might negatively affect the custody case and attract unwanted scrutiny from unnecessary people, 
so it was better that she didn't come. Dom was Iris' personal assistant, so he needed to accompany her at work, especially right now that her two music collaborations with Jean Chonglin became big hits. She was being flooded with new work offers in showbiz. In addition to this, she also had companies that needed her attention, her studies, and also her music compositions. Dom needed to be there in order to make her daily life run smoothly so that she could put her entire focus on her work. According to Clover, Mimi was supposed to come as well but when she took a look at this friend's zombie-like appearance, Clover became frightened so she discouraged Mimi and told her to rest at home instead. Clover even asked young Jiehui to keep a close eye on Mimi because she might sneak out and follow them to court. As for Long Jinjing and Chen Fei, the two of them were the CFO and COO of Orchidia Beauty respectively. With the company's current fast-growing success, they had their hands full in managing its operations and keeping it in the right track. After all, their president CEO had a tendency to take the crazy, unconventional methods toward success. Iris, high risk, high rewards approach would always scare the shit out of both Long Jinjing and Chen Fei, so the two of them needed to provide the company a sense of being grounded to balance everything out. This meant that the two had to dedicate a lot of time working in the company. Jiang Yingyu understood her friend's busy schedules, so she dissuaded them from taking a leave of absence in order to accompany her today. She didn't expect that Clover would ignore her and just show up. Endless gratitude filled her. Miss Jiang, we're here, Hong Xiaoqiang announced beside her. She was sitting in the back seat between Clover and Iris' lawyer who was now hers as well. The three of them looked out of the window and saw the imposing building of the courthouse. Jiang Yingyu's heart began jumping inside her tight chest. She paled and cold sweat began soaking her clothes. Breathe, sis, Clover told her. She closed her eyes and took deep breaths, willing her tense body to relax even for just a little bit. Their car drove slowly until it reached the front driveway leading to the courthouse. Ha! Huh. Why are there so many reporters outside the courthouse? Clover asked, pointing at the building's main entrance. Attorney Hong frowned when he saw the crowd of reporters. Maybe they're here for another case. Jiang Yingyu replied, her tone uncertain. I hope you're right. We want this custody case to reach a conclusion as swiftly as possible. Media attention will just turn it into a circus and might even complicate things, Attorney Hong said. They were hoping that the reporters didn't come for them but for another case also happening today. Although Little Jun's father was the eldest son of Long Tingfei, the current head of Long Industries and the aristocratic Long clan, Long Hui wasn't well known or influential enough in his own right to garner this much media attention. Only Little June's aunt and godmother, Iris Long, had the star power to attract attention from the media. The car stopped. The driver and his partner alighted from the front seat and opened the door for them. When Attorney Hong stepped out, the reporters recognized him and quickly ran towards them. The lawyer frowned upon seeing their reaction to their arrival. Oh no! It seems that the reporters really came for us, Clover said from behind. Jiang Yingyu became even more nervous. It was fortunate that her training as a bodyguard allowed her to maintain an impassive expression. Attorney Hong blocked Jiang Yingyu and Clover from stepping out of the car while the driver and his partner formed a protective barrier in front of them. Despite this, the reporters still shouted questions at Jiang Yingyu. Miss Jiang, is it true that you're refusing to give custody of your son to the father, Mr. Long Hui? because you're asking for an enormous amount of child support. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 646 Jean Corporation's Corporate Lawyer Jiang Yingyu flinched. The other reporters threw similar questions at her. All their questions were nothing more than a guise to accuse her of using the custody case to fatten up her own pockets. What the hell are they asking? Clover was aghast and then enraged. Following Attorney Hong's gestures, both Jiang Yingyu and Clover also alighted from the car. 
The reporters tried getting close but the two bodyguards protected them. Stay calm. Don't say anything and follow behind me. I'll do all the talking, the lawyer whispered to Jiang Yingyu. She nodded. Clover, I think someone set you up and deliberately called all these bloodthirsty wolves today to ask you these disgusting questions. Nobody in their group replied but their expressions showed that they agreed to her words. They made their way to the courthouse, slowed down by the reporters crowding around them. Attorney Hong Xiaoqiang answered some questions while dodging most. He even threatened to sue a handful of the most aggressive reporters for asking malicious questions. While they were midway to the courthouse's main entrance, they heard another car stopping a few meters behind their car. They all turned their heads and saw the rear passenger door open. Out came Long Hui in a dashing business suit. He looked handsome, but his expression was cold and grim. Seeing him so well-groomed and polished, Jiang Yingyu's heart stirred for a couple of seconds before the pain he caused reminded her of why she should stop loving him. Her heart felt like it was being twisted into pieces again. You already killed this love, Yingyu, she inwardly talked to herself. Long Hui looked up and their eyes met. It was as if time froze at that moment. The people and the noise around the two of them disappeared and became muted. All they could see was one another. But it only lasted for a moment before they returned to reality. Long Hui sneered at her, his hatred clear in his expression. Jiang Yingyu pressed her lips together and looked away. She felt someone squeezing her hand and looked up to see Clover giving her a smile of encouragement. The majority of the reporters changed their targets. They left Jiang Yingyu's group and surrounded Long Hui next. Only his lawyer and driver accompanied him. Mr. Long, how do you feel that your ex fiance is withholding your paternal rights to raise your own son because she wanted you to pay an extravagant child support first? Similar less aggressive questions were asked of Long Hui. The difference in the reporter's treatment between him and Jiang Yingyu became clear. What the hell? Clover was once again enraged. It's obvious that they're bullying you, sissing you. I bet it's that asshole who invited all these reporters himself in order to humiliate you and pressure you. How devious. Jiang Yingyu didn't reply. She was too busy trying to contain her emotions and hiding them behind an impassive expression. The group stayed where they were. Moments later, Long Hui, his lawyer and the reporters reached them. The two groups had a face-off, delighting the reporters. Camera shutters clicked non-stop and the questions were thrown from all directions to both parties. Where's my son? Long Hui asked. He's safe. Jiang Yingyu replied in a soft but firm tone. He curled his lip. He'll be safer with me. My son is a boy. A boy needs to learn how to be a man from his own father, so I should be the one raising him. Her impassive expression cracked and revealed a frown. She didn't reply but it was clear from her face that she disagreed with him. Long Hui's lawyer whispered something to him. He gave a last look at Jiang Yingyu before turning away. He and his lawyer left and reached the courthouse's main entrance first. Right at that moment, a third car arrived unnoticed. However, Jiang Yingyu's group focused on it, catching the attention of the reporters. A driver opened the rear passenger door and two figures stepped out of the car. The first one was a middle-aged man with severe falcon-like features. He was followed by an elderly gentleman who looked amiable at first but his sharp eyes and penetrating gaze revealed his formidable nature. Both men looked intimidating. Eh. Why does it seem like the first one who came out of the car look familiar, a reporter wondered. Yeah, I think so, too. I'm pretty sure I've seen that fellow before. Comma. Curious about the commotion, Long Hui and his lawyer paused before entering the courthouse. They turned around and looked at the new arrivals. The falcon-looking middle-aged man and the formidable elderly gentleman began walking side by side. Oh wait. I remember now. Isn't that Kan Huizhong, Jean Corporation's lawyer, exclaimed a reporter. Ah. You're right. It's attorney Kong. 
What's he doing here? Long Huey's expression darkened but he didn't look surprised. Kong Huizhong's appearance meant that Jiang Yingyu also had Jin Liwei's tacit backing in addition to his half-sister Xiulan's support. Kong is Jin Corporation's corporate lawyer but he also handles the Jin family's legal matters, his lawyer explained beside him. Although I know that your son is CEO Jin's godson, I'm still surprised that he sent his own lawyer today for this custody case. Long Hui didn't answer. He agreed to Elder Long Meng's suggestion to invite the media in order to intimidate Jiang Yingyu, yet her side countered with Jin Liwei sending his own lawyer to try intimidating him instead. Memories of his fistfight with Jin Liwei and his half-sister injuring him with a fucking orange flashed in his mind, intensifying his hatred of them. They were the reason why his position as the heir apparent was destabilized, why Lin Yihan became close to Jiang Yingyu and cheated on him, why he broke up with her and had to fight against her for the custody of their son, and why his life had become so fucked up right now. It was all their fault. You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 647 His Excellency Kong Huizhong's appearance diverted the reporter's attention away from Jiang Yingyu and Long Hui. He was, after all, the famed lawyer of the country's number one company, Jin Corporation. The reporters once again changed their targets and surrounded Kong Huizhong. But before they could get too close, the elderly gentleman's piercing eyes beside him made them stop in their tracks. An invisible barrier naturally formed between Kong Huizhong with his elderly companion and the reporters. The pair started walking. The reporters followed them but maintained at least a meter's distance. Hey, is it just me or that old man also looks familiar? One of the reporters asked. Nope. I don't recognize him, replied a young reporter in his twenties. An older gentleman piped in. No, it's not only you. I also feel like I've seen him before. The reporter with the most experience among the group focused his eyes on the elderly gentleman walking beside Kong Huizhong. He observed that Jean Corporation's famed corporate lawyer acted in a respectful and humble manner in the elderly gentleman's presence, as if his status was lower. His eyes narrowed at this thought. Something stirred in his memory. Then a light bulb went off in his head. Deng Gui, he exclaimed, pointing at the elderly gentleman. His expression and tone showed his shock. Who? W. What? Why is everyone reacting like this? Who's Deng Gui? Hearing his name, the elderly gentleman turned his head and looked at the reporter's various expressions. He saw shock, disbelief, confusion, and cluelessness. His sharp eyes didn't miss anything. He didn't say anything but continued walking steadily beside Kong Huizhong. The reporter who first recognized him recovered from his initial shock and called out, Sir, are you His Excellency Deng Gui? The elderly gentleman stopped, and then looked directly at the reporter before nodding. Indeed, I am Deng Gui. Then he resumed walking. His admission caused an uproar among the reporters. Oh my God! It's His Excellency Deng Gui. I don't know who he is, muttered a young reporter but he was already on his phone searching for information about Deng Gui. His Excellency Deng Gui served as a jurist at the International Court of Justice. He's one of the most respected figures in the field of international law. What is a renowned figure like him doing here? I thought he's already retired. Yes, he's already retired. Though I heard that he still occasionally handles some legal matters for his friend Sir Lu Jianhong. He's with Attorney Khan. Maybe they have some important business to attend in the courthouse. Perhaps something that concerns international diplomatic relations in the corporate industry. Oh, that makes sense. Hurry, let's follow them. This is bigger than a mere child custody case. Comma. At the entrance of the courthouse, Long Hui and his lawyer watched this scene. Long Hui's expression showed amazed surprise as he listened to his lawyer describing Deng Gui's identity and his numerous lifetime achievements. Then he frowned. Why is such an illustrious figure with Kong Huizhong? 
We both know that Attorney Kong came today to assist Jiang Yingyu in the custody case. His lawyer paused upon realizing this point before saying with hesitation, I don't know. He wasn't aware of His Excellency's connection to Sir Lu Jianhong, unlike the reporters who were privy to this information because of their extensive insider network. Long Jian and his lawyer opted to watch the new arrivals and satisfy their curiosity instead of their original plan of entering the courthouse ahead of everyone else. Back on the walkway leading to the courthouse's main entrance, the reporters followed Deng Gui and Kang Huizhong while maintaining a respectful distance from them. Their aggressive attitude towards Jiang Yingyu earlier was nowhere to be seen. They thought that the two famed lawyers would head straight to the courthouse but contrary to their expectations, they walked towards attorney Hong Xiaoqiang and his client instead. The two unlikely groups greeted each other as if they were close. Even the falcon-like Kong Huizhong's usually severe expression became kind as he nodded at Hong Xiaoqiang and the two ladies. As for His Excellency Deng Gui, he looked grandfatherly as he chatted with the other group with a smile on his face. He even patted the shoulder of Jiang Yingyu. Those who were watching this scene felt confused. The reporters edged closer, trying to eavesdrop on their conversation. Ahead of them at the courthouse's main entrance, Long Hui and his lawyer began to have a bad feeling after seeing the two famed lawyers interacting with their enemies. After chatting, the two groups, now one, began walking together to the main entrance. The three lawyers, Hong Xiaoqiang, Kang Huizhong, and the renowned Deng Gui, all walked together around the two ladies in a protective manner. Their cold, serious expressions and confident steps showed everyone that they meant business. People automatically made way for them, intimidated by their formidable collective aura. The reporter with the most experience among the group who first recognized Deng Gui mustered up his courage and shouted a question. Your Excellency Deng and Attorney Kong. May we know what kind of business do you have in the courthouse today? Nice question. His fellow reporters were encouraged by him and began following his example. They also began shouting out their own questions. Your Excellency Deng, Attorney Kong, why are you walking with Attorney Hong? How long have you been acquainted with each other? How are you connected with each other? Have you worked together before? The impressive group stopped walking and faced the reporters. The three lawyers looked at each other before Kang Huizhong stepped forward after getting a nod of approval from both Deng Gui and Hong Xiaoqiang. Kang Huizhong faced the crowd of reporters with his usual severe expression, looking like a falcon eyeing his prey. Then he addressed them. I, Kang Huizhong, and His Excellency the Venerable Deng Gui, are honored to be assisting Attorney Hong Xiaoqiang and his client, Miss Jiang Yingyu in the custody case regarding Miss Zhang's young son, Long Jun, starting today. Silence fell as everyone made sense of his words. What? You're tuning into the Han Li's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 648 Tied by Destiny and Evelina Vitrova and Young Jean Liwei Special Part 1 in this remote and isolated part of Russia, the heavenly bodies in the sky could be viewed in their full, shining glory without the hindrance of bright city lights in metropolitan areas. The air was fresher here, the surroundings greener. This vast expanse of land comparable to the size of a small European country was the private territory of the most powerful criminal organization in the world, the Vetrovs. Situated in its most hidden and fortified area lay the highly secretive Vetrov estate. It was a grand residence, no, a palatial fortress fit for a royal family. Its grandeur and beauty would make a person who saw it for the first time speechless in amazement. To Evelina Vitrova, however, this beautiful place was a dull, boring, monotonous, lonely, and hopeless prison. It was a cage that she could never fully escape from in this lifetime. Invisible chains tied her to this place, so that no matter how far she went in other parts of the world, one pull from her parents, the reigning king and queen of the international underworld, and she would be back in her prison. The desire for freedom always burned fiercely in her heart. Unfortunately, her wings had been clipped since the day she was born. There was never any chance for true escape. 
She dreamed about it, of course, and enjoyed the sweet taste of true freedom in her imagination. She even thought of trying to escape, but if she did, there was no doubt that her family and their formidable organization would eventually find her, if their enemies didn't kill her first. Despite all of these, Evelina was still allowed to leave the estate as long as she received the rare permission of her parents, like when she visited her school's campus in the Swiss Alps a few years ago. Cross Academy was a wonderful and breathtaking sanctuary, but she had been unable to fully enjoy it because of her strict entourage who monitored her every move and restricted her from meeting unnecessary people, effectively preventing her from making any friends, and blocked her from visiting places they deemed as a risk to her safety. There were also times when her parents brought her out of the estate to visit other criminal families who they considered to be their allies. Keyword was allies, not friends. In addition to not having true freedom, the Vetrovs, the most powerful criminal family in the international underworld, had no true friends either. Their allies constantly changed. Betrayals were the norm. Allies for today, mortal enemies tomorrow. Evelina thought that a life like this was not worth living at all. She could feel herself dying little by little deep inside each day. Only her music made her feel alive. Also, she felt the most free while roaming the online world and entertaining herself by hacking the toughest systems in the world. And most importantly, spending time with her big brother Nikolai made her feel truly loved. She could also feel that her father loved her but as the king of their organization, Armin Vetrov was extremely busy and was rarely at home to spend quality time with her. As for her mother, Evgenia Vitrova was more like a cold machine programmed to prioritize their organization over anything else rather than a flesh and blood mother who cared for family bonds. True freedom might be impossible for the Vetrovs, but a secret outing once in a while was still doable. Tonight was special because her parents were both out for business in Southeast Asia. They would be gone for a couple of weeks, comma. When her big brother received an emergency call from the U.S., which he needed to personally resolve as soon as possible, she would be left alone in the estate accompanied by her cold bodyguards and similarly emotionless servants. All of them were, simply speaking, her jailers. Seeing her dejected expression, her big brother had an idea. Evelinka, do you want to come with big brother to America? he asked. Of course. Let's go, she answered without thinking. Thus, they made a plan. A secret plan that would get both of them into big trouble if discovered by the estate's key personnel, and worse, by their parents. And as the man and the one who cooked up the idea, her big brother would surely suffer a painful punishment. Even with the consequences, the siblings still went ahead with their plan. Her big brother sent his most loyal subordinate who swore his loyalty to him, not to their parents, to help Evelina sneak out of her bedroom. Due to her big brother's meticulous preparations, assisted by her hacking skills, her escape that night went very smoothly. She saw her bodyguards and other staff laying unconscious as she escaped. She wondered what method her brother used to immobilize them because most of the people working in the estate had been raised and trained by the organization since they were young. All who managed to survive until adulthood became deadly experts and were immune to the most common tranquilizers, narcotics and poisons. Even painkillers were useless to them. Her curiosity about this matter only lasted for a short time. Since they were sneaking out, they had to be extremely careful. Fortunately, Evelina's physical abilities were on a higher level compared to the average people living normal lives because she had been forced to train by her mother. As a result, she was able to keep up with her brother's subordinate as they zigged and zagged here and there to avoid detection from the estate security. Nevertheless, sweat still beaded on her skin and her breathing and heart rate sped up as they followed the escape route her brother devised. Compared to her, her brother's subordinate looked the same as always. He was not sweating or breathing hard at all. Indeed, even though she was stronger than normal people, she was weaker compared to the battle-hardened machines working in their Vetrov organization. This was mainly due to the fact that she resisted training unless her mother sent someone to literally drag her and force her to train. If she wasn't her father and her mother's daughter, Evelina was certain that she would die. 
Theirs was a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It was survival of the fittest. Natural selection. The strong prevailed while the weak died. Finally, Evelina and her big brother's most loyal subordinate managed to escape from the estate. They reached a dense forest where more of her brother's subordinates waited for them and led them deeper into the woods. The light drizzle and chilly gusts of wind didn't affect the lovely smile on Evelina's face now that she was out of the estate. Her smile was as bright and beautiful as the twinkling stars in the Russian summer night sky above, perhaps even more so. Her emerald eyes shone with great anticipation and excitement. There was a skip in her footsteps as she ran with enthusiasm surrounded by her brother's armed subordinates who protected her from wild animals like bears and wolves and other dangers in the forest at night. Her golden hair flew behind her, waving like triumphant banner of freedom. Almost, she whispered, her voice disappearing with the wind, you're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 649 Tied by Destiny and Evelina Vitrova and Young Jean Liwei Special Part 2 Later, Evelina and her brother's subordinates reached a clearing where a row of bulletproof, military-grade off-road vehicles were parked. Regular luxury cars were inconvenient in a remote place like this where most of the roads were unpaved. Her big brother, Nikolai Vetrov, was already there speaking with his other subordinates. By just a glance, anyone could tell that he was the leader. He radiated power and danger. His cold expression betrayed no emotions to his own subordinates. He had green eyes like her, but his were darker and more of an olive color, while hers were like bright emeralds. Sometimes, his eyes would become so dark that they appeared black, especially when he was in a deadly, predatory mode. Unlike her blonde locks, he had black hair. These dark features made it easier for him to blend into the shadows. Except for their green eyes which differed in shade, the siblings didn't resemble each other at all. Evelina Vitrova looked like an angel with the shining halo of heavenly radiance while Nikolai Vetrov looked like a demon prince whose inner darkness was fathomless. Nevertheless, as soon as her big brother saw her, his emotionless eyes lit up and filled with gentleness in an instant. Evelina ran faster and then threw herself at him. He caught her easily as if she weighed nothing. Ready? She nodded, almost trembling with excitement. All right. Let's head to America. Comma. The Vetrovs had their own fleet of private aircraft to suit their various needs. At the moment, the siblings used one of Nikolai's own private jets. He explained to Evelina that it was a new one and that he was careful not to let their parents know about it. Unlike his straightforward sister who had no qualms revealing her thoughts, which often got her into trouble with their mother, Nikolai was a secretive person. Even Evelina didn't know the extent of all his secrets. As usual, they used passports with fake identities. The Vetrovs were the most wanted figures in the world. They couldn't just openly use their real identities to travel everywhere. As an added precaution, they planted their own people in different airports from all over the world so that they could bypass regular customs screening. Nikolai and Evelina arrived in Boston, Massachusetts early morning. They were driven to a mansion Nikolai rented beforehand. If he was traveling alone, he would have stayed in a hotel but since he brought his beloved sister along this time, he decided that it would be safer to stay in a private property instead. After eating breakfast ordered from a popular Chinese restaurant, Lu Ziheo left the mansion in a hurry to inspect the problem he came to resolve. He left a team of his subordinates to protect Evelina. She was allowed roam outside as long as she stayed with the bodyguards Nikolai assigned for her. She had been to the U.S. a handful of times before but never to Boston yet. This was her first time. She was excited to explore the city and enjoy the sights. Her bodyguards wore regular, civilian clothes so as not to attract attention. Only two of them followed beside her while the rest monitored her from a distance. However, they would arrive by her side in a flash if she ever fell in danger. They drove her to the nearest commercial area filled with shops, restaurants and other tourist attractions. 
She wasn't really interested in shopping, so she mostly tried foods that she hadn't tasted before. Wearing a long, flowing, floral dress, she attracted people's attention of all ages and genders whenever she passed by. Wow! That babe looks hot. Is she a model? She looks like a movie star. Comments like these were common but she didn't notice. She was too preoccupied enjoying the unfamiliar place. Tired of walking, she asked her bodyguards to drive her to the world-famous Ivy League University nearby. It was the oldest institution of higher learning in the U.S. As a cross-academy alumnus who even revolutionized the legendary school's computer department into a completely new direction, she was curious about the other top schools in the world below the academy's level. She was one of Cross Academy's youngest graduates in recent history, having been scouted to enroll during her teens. There were younger graduates than her, but those notable figures dated back more than a hundred years ago when the educational systems in many countries weren't as standardized yet compared to today. The Academy was able to recruit those genius individuals back then and directly groom them without any prior formal education. When they arrived at the campus, Evelina began walking around. Most of the students she saw were around her age. As she strolled, she heard all kinds of conversations from looming deadlines, to exams, to upcoming parties, to public protests, to campus events, and a whole slew of other topics. Amazing, she breathed. The university was completely different from Cross Academy. For one thing, it felt more crowded. There were many times more students, even if it was summer. Thus, it felt more alive and vibrant. Evelina couldn't help but feel a twinge of envy as she watched the students gathered in their own groups, chatting about their shared interests and simply spending time together. How nice! Aside from the other hackers she befriended online, she really didn't have any close friends. Even those hackers were just people she occasionally chatted with and had never met in person. She was tempted to walk up to one of the group of students and try chatting with them, perhaps even make some friends, but with the bodyguards monitoring her, she knew that it wasn't wise. She knew her limits. If she pushed it, even her doting big brother would harden and send her back to their Russian estate before she could fully enjoy this temporary freedom. Sighing, she turned away with great reluctance and continued walking around. Some distance away, a particular group of students were eyeing the beautiful young woman. Whoa! That girl is gorgeous. She looks around the same age as us. Do you think she's a student here? I don't know. She doesn't look like it. From the way she's looking around, she should be a visitor. Those two guys walking beside her look hot, too. Do you think one of them is her boyfriend? What kind of boyfriend would walk a little behind his beautiful girlfriend like that? If I had a girlfriend as hot as her, I'll be all over her and stick to her like glue and leave no space between us. I know, right? But man, how could a human being be so beautiful? Is she for real? Do you think she got anything done on herself? Nah, she looks natural to me. The group of students who were also friends continued talking about the beautiful woman until she disappeared from their view. By the way, where's Liam? Is he still coming with us to eat lunch? Yeah, he should be. Don't know why he's still so busy when he already graduated and got his bachelor's degree this past spring. Because he enrolled in some classes this summer to get a head start for his accelerated MBA degree this coming fall. Damn overachiever. You're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 650 Tied by Destiny and Evelina Vitrova and Young Jean Liwei Special Part 3 Yeah, I heard that he plans to complete his MBA in just one year and return to China to help run their family's company. He's, like, super rich in their country. Oh, I remember something. I heard that the babe who's always following Liam around, what's her name again? Lily or Daisy, something flower. Rose, if I remember correctly. What about her? Yeah, her. I heard that her family is running the Singapore branch of Liam's family company. 
A girlfriend of one of the group members crossed her arms over her chest and snorted while rolling her eyes. That girl's too thirsty for Liam. I mean, can't you be any more obvious? Popping up wherever he is. We all know that Liam hates it when girls throw themselves at him and try too hard to get his attention. He even becomes grumpy whenever I and the other girlfriends hang out with you. I swear that guy has a phobia of girls or something. True. Liam really has a strong aversion to females. Incorrect. Liam only has a strong aversion to females who go gaga in the eyes chasing after him. If you're one of the rare females who isn't attracted to him, then he'll be okay with interacting with you. The girlfriends in the group pouted. Although they were in a relationship with Liam's friends, they still felt attracted to him to some degree. They were able to hang out with the group because they held themselves back and didn't act on their attraction. There were girlfriends before who tried seducing Liam while still in a relationship with his friends. They were now exes. The guys in this group of university friends followed the code, brothers before hoes. If Liam continued to be an overachiever, he would certainly become the next head of his family's multinational company with a net worth in the billions of dollars. Although they were only university students right now, they were already thinking about their futures. Befriending someone like Liam who would become a formidable figure in the business world in the future would, without a doubt, benefit them in the long run. When given the choice of staying loyal to Liam or hooking up with some hot girls at this stage of their young lives, of course they would choose their mister. Moneybag's friend. Was there even a need to think about something so obvious? They sacrificed so much in order to enroll in this world-class and prestigious university, so they were all ambitious and determined to succeed. Thus, they never hesitated to dump girls who tried using them to get close to Liam no matter what a hot fuck they were. The guys and their girlfriends continued chatting under the cool shade of a centuries-old tree waiting for Mr. Moneybags. Oh. Liam just texted. He says that he still need to talk to his professor, so we should go ahead to the square. He'll meet us in the restaurant when he's done. That's great. It means we can spend more time with you, guys, one of the girlfriends said. You always make us girls leave when you're with Liam. I think I'm getting jealous of him. Everyone laughed before the group headed to the square outside the campus which was also a popular entertainment hub among the students. It was a vibrant community featuring eclectic yet cheap shops and lots of good food. When they arrived at the square, it was bustling with life even though it was summer. People milled around looking for a place to eat lunch. There were fewer students at the moment compared to the regular fall and winter terms when new students would join the university life every start of the academic year. The group headed to their favorite Italian restaurant. But on the way there, they encountered a crowd consisting of students, locals, and some tourists. Someone placed a piano on a mini park by the street a few weeks ago. Anyone could play it. Some music students used it for busking to earn some spare change and also hoping for someone to discover them and hopefully make them rich and famous someday. At the moment, it looked like someone was busking again. The group stopped by to watch for a bit. Indeed, a music student was playing an original song. The song sounded okay but it was nothing amazing. People came and went. Not many people stayed for the entire performance. The group arrived near the end of the song. There was a smattering of applause when the performance ended. A couple of tourists even each gave a dollar bill to the performer. The group was about to leave and head to the Italian restaurant when they saw someone familiar. Hey, it's that gorgeous lady from earlier. Look. Comma. They all turned their heads and watched as the blonde lady with beautiful green eyes appeared and walked towards the piano. Her long floral dress rippled gently in the breeze, making her look like she was floating instead of walking. Everyone was mesmerized by her, their eyes following her every move. She spoke to the music student who just finished his lukewarm performance. When she smiled, the music student couldn't close his mouth and kept staring at her. Moments later, he gave up his seat and they exchanged places in front of the piano. 
Oh, was she performing? The people already started clapping even when she hadn't done anything yet. The beautiful woman smiled at the audience, making them catch their breaths, before placing her hands over the piano keys. Her smile deepened. Then she started playing. Scott Joplin's The Entertainer started playing under her graceful hands. Many recognized the popular classic ragtime piano piece. The easy, catchy tune made them bounce on their feet and put smiles on their faces. However, they were a bit surprised that the beautiful young woman would play a ragtime piece. Looking at her elegance, flowing beauty and aristocratic air, they thought that she would play one of those intricate piano pieces fit for high-class concertos. Instead, she played a very relatable piece that almost everyone could appreciate. A minute into the performance, someone stepped out of a crowd, he looked like a student, too, and started tap dancing to the tune, eliciting another wave of enthusiastic cheers from the crowd. People whipped out their phones to record the fun impromptu performance. The group of friends also joined. They had now become engrossed with the street performance and had temporarily forgotten that they were supposed to wait for their friend Liam at their favorite Italian restaurant in the square. When the performance ended, everyone gave a loud standing ovation, well, they were already standing in the first place. Cheers, whistles, and loud clapping. The crowd had grown thrice its original size since the beautiful woman took over the piano. Encore. 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 Don't go yet. We want more. Evelina Vitrova paused for a moment. She only played on a whim, unable to stop herself upon seeing a piano. She only planned on playing one piece before leaving but the crowd's applause and request for more made her happy. Her bodyguards weren't happy by all the attention she was getting, though. They were already walking towards her, ready to take her away, so she made a quick decision. Smiling quickly at the guy who tap danced, she returned in front of the piano and started playing again. Her favorites to play on the piano were the great classical pieces from the best masters in history, but today's vibrant and youthful atmosphere made her decide against playing the usual. This was why she chose to play Joplin's The Entertainer, to match the casual and fun environment. What should I play next? While walking around the university earlier, she overheard all kinds of conversations from the students. They were all studying hard in order to reach their dreams, hoping to be successful one day. Everything was hard for them right now but they were holding on for that chance to be big someday. With that in mind, Evelina decided on the piece that she was going to play next. Her left fingers bounced on the piano keys and produced a deep, bass sound before tapping the same hand on the wooden top of the piano for a beat. She repeated these curious actions eight times for the intro before her right hand joined and started playing a familiar tune. Ah! Everyone recognized the music, you're tuning into the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories. Chapter 651 Tied by Destiny and Evelina Vitrova and Young Jean Liwei Special Part 4 Someone started singing along with the piano music. Buddy, you're a boy, make a big noise. Playing in the street, gonna be a big man someday. Others joined in. They even started stomping their feet and clapping their hands in the same beat as the music. We will, we will rock you. Soon, everyone was singing along to the catchy song. The crowd was no longer mere spectators but active participants of the performance instead. More people gathered, their attentions caught by the energetic spectacle. They squeezed their way into the already packed crowd and became even more amazed upon seeing that the one playing the popular rock music on the piano and stimulated all these people was a beautiful, elegant and classy young woman. It was like being in a concert. Everyone was having so much fun. This was the first time Evelina felt such exhilaration while playing the piano. Her heart raced inside her chest, pumping blood throughout her whole body, filling her up with what seemed like endless energy and making her feel oh so alive. She felt like she was on top of the world, as she performed with what she was most passionate about, music. The audience's enthusiasm fed her to perform better, 
even revising her cover of this classic rock anthem song as she played it, improving the arrangement in the process. So this is what it's like to perform in front of a big audience. She loved it. Rock music wasn't her strongest forte due to her training in classical music, but which music lover hadn't heard of this hit song by one of the best-selling bands in the world? Even her music mentor, the hitmaker Enrique Valdez held great respect and admiration to all of the band's members. The song was one of the top greatest hit songs of all time. It was energizing. This was why Evelina decided to play this particular song in this occasion, instead of choosing from her extensive repertoire of intricate classical pieces. More than this, the song's message resonated with her especially in this kind of youthful environment. Like all these university students who were around the same age her, she also had her own big dreams. Unlike them, however, she would never be able to achieve those dreams in this lifetime no matter how hard she tried. There was no escape for her. Her fate had already been sealed the moment she was born as Evelina Vitrova, the sheltered princess of the reigning criminal family in the international underworld. Looking at all the students having fun while singing along with the music she was playing, Evelina thought that they were all so lucky. They had the freedom to strive for their dreams. There might be hardships, but at least they had the chance. Unlike her. Evelina tossed these hopeless thoughts out of her mind. She wanted to focus on the performance. She wanted to enjoy it. There might not be a chance for her to achieve her dreams but at least for now, she was able to have a taste of what it felt like to perform in front of an audience cheering and clapping for her, loving her music and making her understand what it felt like to be truly alive. We will, we will rock you. She threw her head back and tossed one of her hands up in the air, a sign of victory, feeling the music and the crowd's energy with her own body. Comma. Jean Liwei walked with a sense of purpose, looking straight ahead with a cold and indifferent expression. He had an appointment to meet the friends he made in university for lunch at their favorite Italian restaurant in the square. On his way there, there were too many people who tried catching his attention, wanting to chat with him, but he pretended not to see them, especially if he had no idea who they hell they were. How annoying. He wasn't being rude. No, he didn't think so. He just didn't want to waste his time on useless talk with strangers. What was the most precious currency in the world? Gold? Dollars? Euro? No. It was time. Time was extremely precious, not only to people working in the business industry but literally to everyone alive. You could earn all the money you lost and more if you had the drive, capability and health, but you could never earn back the time you lost in your life. All you would have left were regrets. Time waited for no one. That was why he felt extremely annoyed when a certain girl blocked his path and delayed him from meeting his friend sooner. Hello, big brother Li Wei, Rose Young greeted him. What is it? Be quick about it. I'm in a hurry, he said, his tone as cold and indifferent as his expression. Hey, Liam. Was up? Oh wow. So this is the famous Liam all the girls in our university are talking about. We're gonna have a party at my place tonight. You're welcome to join us, Liam. Rosie is gonna be there. A furrow formed between Jean Liwei's brows at Rose Young's companions. They were too annoying just like her. However, he couldn't just simply ignore her because her family was an integral part in running Jean Corporation's Singapore branch. His father also had a bit of a friendship with her father, Romeo Young, although they weren't close. It was the type of superficial friendship developed from regular business cooperation. Thus, Jean Liwei nodded at Rose Young's friends as a greeting so as not to waste his saliva talking to them. They seemed pleased, though, that he acknowledged them. They all batted their eyes at him and thrust their chests forward, deepening the furrow between his brows. I just want to congratulate you for graduating and getting your bachelor's degree. What a great accomplishment. Uncle and Auntie and Grandmother Lee must be so proud of you. I'm also very proud of you, Rose told him while giving him a sweet smile. He nodded. Thanks. 
I heard that you also got accepted in the MBA program. Wow! You're such a big inspiration to me, big brotherly way. I wish to follow in your footsteps but I know that I can never reach your level. You're so smart. They were speaking in Mandarin so Rose Young's mostly American companions couldn't understand them. They didn't mind, though. They were too busy ogling Liam Jean who was voted as the hottest Asian student in the campus. Not only was he extremely smart and a straight-A student, but he was also quite athletic. His professors bragged about him as if he was their own son. And most importantly, he was rumored to be ultra-rich. Girls like them could smell a rich guy from a mile away. Liam Jean was prime meat and they all wanted to have a taste of him, but Rose Young already had her eyes set on him. The two also seemed to be familiar with each other, something like family friends. Rose Young was a tough opponent and someone that they didn't want to mess with. The last girl who became enemies with her ended up dropping out of university never to be seen or heard from again. Who knew what kind of methods Rose Young used to drive the poor girl out of such a prestigious university that was so difficult to get into? Whatever. Rose Young was rich and frequently treated them to shopping in expensive restaurants. Although they didn't like her as a person because she looked down on them sometimes, they liked her money and how generous she spent it. Therefore, she was a good friend. Rose Young continued chatting with Jean Leeway, blind to the fact that he wasn't interested in having a conversation with her. She was basically just talking to herself. His replies could be counted in one hand. I need to go now. Bye, Jean Leeway interrupted her in the middle of her self-conversation. He didn't wait for her reply before leaving. Big Brother Leeway, wait. Where are you going? He ignored her. I want to treat you for lunch as my congratulations for getting into the MBA program. Wait. Big brother. His mind had begun to automatically filter out all the annoying noises in the background, so he no longer heard her. He walked quickly, almost jogging, because he was already ten minutes late for his meeting with his friends. He hated being late. Thanks to his burst of speed and long legs, Rose Young was unable to keep up with him. She had no choice but to give up and let him go. However, she didn't look disappointed. On the contrary, she had a smug expression on her face. After all, she was the only female student in the university who he was willing to talk to. He was notorious for ignoring all the girls who tried talking to him. That made her special. Back to Jean Leeway, he already reached the square and was about to text his friends when he heard something from a distance. We will, we will rock you. His usual cold and indifferent expression registered interest. What's going on? Is there an event in the square today, he wondered. It seemed like he wasn't the only one interested in what was happening. There were other students headed towards the origin of the sounds. They couldn't see it yet but they could hear that there must be a lot of people gathered to produce such a loud singing group. Hmm. I'll take a look at it quickly before meeting with my friends. You're tuning in to the Han Lee's Wuxia Adventures YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on this journey to catch the most captivating stories.